them to emotionally burden and exhaust other people. We're both grown-ups. We both trust each other. It just seemed like the right time to open ourselves up to meeting other people and barraging them with our crippling emotional neediness. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I still want to vent to Allison about all the anxieties I have at the office until she wishes I would just shut the f up. But sometimes you just get the urge to sap the life out of a different woman for a change. The flexible arrangement has allowed Fry and Hardman to participate in a variety of tiresome and psychologically draining one-off encounters with partners ranging from close acquaintances to total strangers. Of course there was a time when I couldn't imagine saddling anyone but Peter with my extensive emotional baggage and trust issues, but now that we've tried it... <laughs> the best part is, when we're back together, all we really want to do is drain the living shit out of each other. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Welcome to the program. You may dial in toll-free to take control of the airwaves. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you tonight, you've got Ian in studio. Derek J. And Mark. And you can join us online, of course, at freetalklive.com. Please drop by there and enjoy the features that we have waiting for you on the site. They are totally free. A lot of those talk show hosts they charge you for their websites. Ours, you can probably find more stuff for free than you would find behind the paywall of some of those other shows. So go and enjoy at freetalklive.com. You may reach us via Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Uh, and then, by the way, you do need to send a contact request first. It'll be approved. Once that's done, it'll be easy for you to call on Skype. Let's go to the Skype where we have Jeffrey in Philadelphia. Jeffrey, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey guys, how's how's it going? Hey, good. What's on your mind tonight? Um, not much. Uh, so basically, I'm just calling to talk about something about I was talking with Derek about over Facebook, um, which is what's the best way to communicate libertarian principles, not just with non-libertarians, but you know, also further explore some principles we talk about, specifically, you know, non-aggression, things like that, to libertarians that might not fully understand them or might misapply them in certain situations. I tend to think that there's lots of different ways to do it, but um, sure. What's what's your idea? Well, I just I think that there's a lot of you know equivocation, um, unintentional usually, uh, with different terms. You know, like like self ownership is a term that that bothers me really specifically. Um, okay. You know, it's like a really vague term. You know, I don't understand why people don't say body ownership. It's it's like things like that or a state versus government. Um, well, using I, these terms interchangeably is a mistake that we kind of use. From the get-go, maybe. What do you think is the learn. value of uh, saying body ownership over self-ownership? Well, I think when you say self-ownership, like we have a lot of libertarians that might believe in intellectual property, which I don't think you can be a libertarian and accept li intellectual property. Um, and I think saying self can kind of lead to that idea that you there's think that more. Self leads to the idea of intellectual property, but body yeah. doesn't. Yeah, I mean, when you say that you own your body, you're you're saying that you can only really own tangible things. When you say you can own yourself, I mean, what does the word self mean other than you know possibly intangible things like a soul or thoughts or your thoughts. labor? Yeah, I see where you're if there from. is yeah. a soul, I own it, and if there are thoughts, I I own them. Um, well, I can see where he's coming from. The idea being yeah, that if it. you own your thoughts, then you could own your ideas. Therefore, you should own let me the counter it, property. Okay, let me let me counter yeah. it. I think that there's a counter to this. Um, Libertarianism suffers from uh, to this sort of culty aspect where we have a lot of jargon. Uh, you know, like when you talk about the non-aggression principle, well, the average person doesn't know what the non-aggression principle is. And so when you talk about the non-aggression principle as though you know what the non-aggression principle is, then you're leaving people out and including – it's including and excluding. When you start using, you know, like self-ownership, it sounds more normal than body ownership. Um, and, and whose body are we talking about? Um, if, if I own my body, does that mean I can own other people's bodies? Uh, when you say body <laughs> ownership, what does that mean? Like it, That's a good it, point. It has its own sort of it, – A, it sounds culty, and B, I don't think it's specific. Or I don't think that anybody – when you say self-ownership, I don't think anybody's going to confuse that with me owning you. They're only going to uh, assume that you own you, right? Yeah. I mean obviously there's implicit understandings in both. I mean to say that of course there's an implicit understanding that body is referring to your only body when I say that, but you're also – when you say self, I don't know I mean, that it implicitly uh, describes that. I think that you want it to describe that, but well, I don't think that it means that to the other people. Um, yeah, maybe not. And again, it's not so much as communicating with non-libertarians, people who don't have a firm grasping of these concepts. It's more about being able to, since we're such a, a younger movement, really, you know, as far as the intellectual com community is concerned, um, 
you know, being able to have solid foundation and have ideas that are logically consistent and we apply correct definitions properly. And I think a lot of libertarians... Um, I think make, I think you live in a mistakes. fantasy world if you think you're going to get a world where people apply uh, definitions properly. Whether you you know with you're talking about a liberty community or non liberty liberty community, the, the community is way too big to uh, suggest that you're going to be able to control definitions. I, don't I think I that's like, what he was saying. I mean, I didn't well, hear. Well, that's kind saying. of what he's saying. Well, that, he's focusing. I, it sounds to me like Jeff is suggesting a focus on language, choosing precise language. I believe so it's important. Come across, yeah, so yeah, that is obviously well, that's why important. I don't call my. I mean, I, I don't. I don't like the term capitalist. I don't like the term anarchist. I think yeah. that the, these words are not really communicative of what it is that uh, I would like to express to people. And but so you're, I don't use you're doing that based on their use of language, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, you're, I'm not you're trying not, to change their mind. You're about not it. Stick, stick, sticking your petard in the ground and saying, "I claim this word," although I do do that with certain words. I mean, I will. I, I, there's some words that I'm willing to fight for, and other words I'm not willing to fight mm -hmm. for. But when we start saying that we need to, you know, let's change this one, change that one. At some point, you're fighting a war on too many fronts, um, mm -hmm. and you'll never, and you can't win that way. I say, let's grab a few words. And really claim those and then try to work our stuff in with other people as we understand their definitions of words while we speak to them. I say words probably aren't as important as actions. So if you're trying to convince people about libertarian ideals, maybe just live them and Ooh. that will, you know, that will attract people bah, better you need to have than, words. You need better than your words. language. <laughs> well, uh, I like where Derek's coming from. I think more liberty minded people need to live their ideas, but at the same time, they need to be able to communicate their ideas to people as well. Because when somebody asks you, hey, why aren't you paying taxes this year? You know, then you can explain it to them with your words. Uh, but I, th I absolutely agree. And that's something that liberty minded folks really need to get their, their butts in gear and move to New Hampshire where they can actually put their ideals into action because otherwise it just seems like a big online debate club pretty much everywhere else. It Jeffrey, looks a lot like that. <laughs> anything else you want to share with us tonight? No, it's a complex topic, but, you know, we're starting the ball, which is important. So All right. thanks, guys. Thanks for the call. I appreciate it. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, still to come tonight, Uber's surge pricing. It's back in the news. We discussed it previously on Free Talk Live, the idea being that during busy times, uh, the Uber car transport group, uh, their drivers, will they're able to charge what's called surge pricing wherein, you know, it's busy, so you pay more. And apparently people are upset that they were doing surge pricing during apparently this hostage situation that was going on in, was it Sydney, Australia? Yeah, that's today? right. So Derek J. would like to talk about that. Also, you can bring up anything, but also across the pond, I've been teasing this one for days, so finally let's jump into it here. From BuzzFeed.com, the story is about the UK pornography ban. Now, apparently y'all talked about this, was it two weeks ago, Mark, on Wednesday with Chris Cantwell? I yes. feel like it, that's when it was. Uh, I wasn't here for that particular episode, but it's back in the news. This UK pornography ban, they've decided to prohibit the production of certain types of pornography in the United Kingdom. Uh, as my understanding, it is pro prohibited to produce and prohibited to sell to people in the United Kingdom. I can go through Do the list. Do they have inspectors who come by to check porn sets to make sure that you're not doing certain types of porn? It wouldn't surprise me. I know that out in L.A. They Hello, I'm the inspector just here to check things out. They had, pro uh, I think, I think in all of L.A. they have now made it so you have to wear condoms during porn production and presumably they would need someone to inspect that sort wow. of thing. Uh, so here's but, the story. I mean, mostly what that's going to do is drive people to other counties like Orange that's County correct. and that sort of thing to uh, create their porn. I, I think that I do think that it's a good idea. Like if you're going to produce porn, let's use some condoms here, people. But I wouldn't suggest legislating it. Well, I don't know. I don't know if uh, condomized porn versus uncondomed porn sells better. Oh, I I'm suspect sure. uncondom porn. I, I suspect people prefer their their porn without condoms. I suspect so, which would be why there's a fairly high uh, incidence of testing of people in the porn as they industry should, sure. to make sure that people are clean so they can have sex safely, at least or as safely as possible. I don't believe possible. in tackle football either. So yeah. you know, I'm just that kind of guy. Uh, so here's what happened. Friday afternoon, this was uh, this this last Friday, dozens of protesters met outside Parliament to demand the repeal of the new regulations restricting the sale of pornography in the UK. 
by sitting on each other's faces. Oh, God. And there's <laughs> plenty of photos of this happening. The protest was organized by Charlotte Rose, former sex worker of the year and friend there's of... There's a sex worker of the year, all right. Yep, and friend of one of the MPs there in the UK. Beforehand, she pledged to break the record for the biggest face-sitting event of all time <laughs> and hoped to have hundreds of people taking part. The new restrictions, which came into effect at the beginning of this month, ban certain extreme acts from being sold online by UK porn companies, including, uh, I don't know how detailed we want to get in this, but let's just say uh, bodily functions such as uh, urination would be involved, uh, spanking, caning, whipping, beyond a gentle level are not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> Life-endangering activities such as strangulation and face-sitting, apparently that is categorized as life-endangering, cannot be carried out. Uh, fisting, we won't tell you what that means in detail, but that's banned. 855 450 free. We'll come back with more here in moments on what's going on in the UK. You can take control as well. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. 
Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Welcome to the program. You may dial in toll-free here to bring up anything that you would like. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us via Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. Still to come tonight, Uber's surge pricing is upsetting people yet again. It's not the first time it's been in the news. Derek J is going to give us what the latest is on that. Uh, Also, you're welcome to share your thoughts on anything that you'd like coming up. Winters get cold here in New Hampshire, so I'm heading to Acapulco. That's uh, Acapulco for Anarcopulco at the end of February. Jeff Berwick the, of the Dollar Vigilante. What's that, Ian? I said, ooh. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Sounds like fun. He, uh, he's, he's decided that Acapulco is the new Liberty destination. And I would like to know, I want to see for myself, what's the value in this? Uh, so, obviously, he's going to be there. Jeff Berwick from the Dollar Vigilante. Angel Clark, of course, who's moved down there recently. But also, speakers include Roger Veer. Um, he's going to be there. Cody Wilson, Nima V, Objectivist Girl, Luke Rudkowski, Dana Martin talking about unschooling, Ernie Hancock from Freedom's Phoenix, many more. So what more reason do you need to go down to Acapulco in February? It's going to be awesome. Hotels are reasonably priced. Tickets are less than $100 if you register by Christmas. So you got to get the early bird discount by registering by Christmas. Uh, There's going to be workshops all week, but the um, action really heats up on the weekend. So it's basically February the 27th through March the 1st, but there are workshops the uh, you know days before that. I'm going to go a day early for the unschooling workshop, um, and I'll be there for the weekend. So go take a look at the uh, schedule and see what works for you. It's Anarcha polco.com it's the new liberty destination anarchapolco.com that's a n a r c h a you can do both he owns both domains okay so you could do anarchopolco okay. or anarchapolco gotcha but basically it'll come up on a google search too if you attempt to find this cuz i couldn't spell i couldn't spell acapulco when i started uh, <laughs> looking into this either so i just typed some stuff in and pretty soon it came up and it's it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun anarchapolco.com UK had a a very unique protest, and uh, I like fun protests. I have to say this one sounds like it would have been a lot of fun to attend. The sit-on-my-face protest happening outside of uh, Parliament there. We'll get back into the details on what exactly is banned from the UK's porn collection now. You can't have certain things there. Uh, You can't buy them. I guess maybe maybe they're not illegal to possess at this point, but you cannot purchase and you cannot produce certain types of pornography, and people were protesting that. We'll tell you some of the other creative things that were going on out there. And uh, then, of course, your calls about anything. In fact, that's what we're doing right now. We've got on the line Matthew in Illinois calling from federal prison. You're on Free Talk Live, Matthew. Howdy, fellas. Hey there. Hey, uh, I I just called in because I'm trying to avoid getting more neighbors in here, and I wanted to let people know that, you know, what the government can and can't do as far as entrapment goes. And uh, they recently kind of... uh, articulated their doctrine, uh, the government can issue, initiate contact, suggest the crime, and provide the means to carry it out. And this is, these things are, do not equal entrapment. The government has to do something else. What's that? Because that sounds like, I mean, trying to entice somebody to do something illegal sounds for all the world like entrapment to me. But go ahead. Right. Well, that's the thing. You know, I mean, it, this, this it, it doesn't violate what's legal in your head. It's, this goes to the heart of... of the way most of us Americans are raised. I mean, the government's allowed to initiate contact, suggest the crime, and provide the means to carry it out. And this is not entrapment. They must do something else for this to be entrapment. So what's the other thing? Oh, they have to uh, induce you in some way with threats to fear, uh, friendship, guilt, uh, you know, psychological pressure, other than the three things that I just mentioned. Friendship, huh? So if they offer you money, then that would be entrapment? No, no. They can offer you money. The The only thing they can't do is offer you a tremendous amount of money. They can't say, well, if you go get me a pound of meth, I'll give you a million dollars for it. Okay. But if they were to offer you a reasonable price, you know, say the twenty to $50,000 range, this would be just fine. But if they right. offer, if they threaten you, then you're doing it under, you could, you could argue you're doing it under duress. Exactly. 
but mm-hmm. but the uh, the case that this this all hinges off of comes out of the Seventh Circuit, where basically a government agent met a guy in a bar and uh, suggested that he go rob a uh, oh they can also participate suggested they go rob a, <laughs> a, a house that was holding uh, uh, cocaine and money and uh, provided the um, you know suggested the crime provided the automobile and the guns to carry it out and uh, told them it would be uh, cocaine, 15 kilos of cocaine, and hundreds of thousands of dollars in the house. And this was not entrapment. Wow. It's incredible. It almost sounds like the government agents responsible for stopping crimes and preventing them are suggesting and causing them. Right. And they're, they're picking, you know, vulnerable people. I mean, the, what I find most repugnant is they can initiate the contact to where they could just walk up to you and say, hi, Ian, hi, Mark, uh, you know, Let's go. How about if we go rob a bank? I've got some guns and a car. Uh, Pilot from a federal prison. You know, you guys are looking kind of down and out. Why don't we go do that? And they can even drive you. Incredible. Yeah, I think uh, what you I mean, my from here on out, I'm just going to start asking people. Are, so if I do this, are you going to be my friend? <laughs> Because <laughs> that's going to take care of it all, right? So it's the new. It's instead of uh, you know, like they, the, well, the prostitutes, you got to show me your boobs, or the uh, what? What it, you ask? You have to tell the cop. Uh, you have to ask specifically, are you a cop? You know that never works. Um, no, no, that's just a myth. Yeah, that's that's yeah. a myth. But yeah. you know, this one isn't. If so, are you going to be my friend? Is not a myth. <laughs> Now, is this a newer decision? Only in legal land, by the way, can this, you know, you just have these weird conversations. Now, right. tell me, is this a newer decision, Matthew, or is it fairly old? No, it just, it's, it's come out in the last uh, few days. Oh, okay. Um, uh, it was in the Bloomberg Criminal Law Reporter of, oh, I don't know, three or four days ago. I, I can't remember the exact date on the issue. How are you getting uh, news like this uh, in federal prison? Just well, curious. we have a computer system that has a bulletin board, and I want to be very clear with folks out there. We do not have the Internet. We have a really weird form of email, and we have mm-hmm. sort of an internal bulletin board system where we can um, keep track of our money. Okay. And uh, it's a uh, bulletin board system, so the prisons can let us know about policies and events and so forth. And uh, then there's um, we can all we have MP3 players, and we can buy music. But it's not like internet; it's it's uh, censored. Sure, censored music. And, yes. Oh, yeah. And they'll re- and they'll remove things. Like sometimes you'll buy something, and then they'll find out there's naughty words in it later, and then they'll remove it, and it will <laughs> suck it back off your player. Oh wow! And, and, wow. They're really censoring naughty words from prisoners' MP3s. <laughs> Boy, I, I, I bet nobody there at Marion cusses. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, it's, including the guards, <laughs> they would never, <laughs> never. Right, right. We don't, we don't hear these things. Uh, well, no, okay. So, where's the news coming from? So, on this bulletin board, there's like select news feeds that they'll let you. No, have? no, just, it's it's a single thing. It's called the Brim, uh, the Bloomberg Criminal Law Reporter. Okay, that's and, all you got, and, and okay. that's it. Okay. Yeah, wow. and then. There's some people that receive news by email. There's, uh, you know, right. what I when I was in prison, what uh, I would hear officers say is, is, we want you guys to have cable. We didn't have cable. You always we had a closed circuit television uh, mm-hmm. system that was right. run over copper wires, so you could call it cable yeah. if you wanted to, but we didn't have cable. And right. these are the things that are said over and over. Is, is the officers like, I wish you guys had cable because Settle down. Yeah, right. I mean, you know, and I had another officer say, I wish they'd give you a, a, a an ounce of weed every week. Yeah, no doubt. You know, why? in the world wouldn't you do these things well because you want to punish 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 i've i've heard all those things before and, and you know the, the, the other thing i think people don't know is they charge us a 30 percent tax on everything they sell us to pay for all these tvs wow hey thanks Basketball for the call tonight man yeah, i do TVs appreciate for- hearing from you from the yeah. inside there there's matthew in federal prison there's more free talk live coming up It's that time of year again, and you know what that means. Cold and flu season. (laughs) But don't worry. HerbalHealer.com has you and your loved ones covered with our safe and natural products. Cold and flu fighters like beta-glucans, olive leaf antiviral capsules, grapefruit seed extract, HHA four-herb capsules, elderberry power, and respirate. And don't forget about oregacillin for the lungs, normally $34.95, on sale now for only $25. Vitamin D3 120-count soft gels, only $9. Whole body and homeopathic detoxes for the lungs, kidneys, liver, lymph, and brain, normally $26.95, now just $20. HerbalHealer.com also offers correspondence courses to teach you how to handle your health naturally. 
And as always, new customers get a free 128-page catalog with your order. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click the Winter Specials button to save on our natural cold and flu-fighting products. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Here is the Onion Week in Review Transportation Edition. In Albany, a Greyhound bus crash claimed 30 miserable lives Tuesday, finally putting over two dozen deadbeat fathers, penniless drug addicts, and hapless bastards out of their misery. Emergency crews at the scene of the merciful accident described the sea of fast food bags, candy bar wrappers, and losing lottery tickets surrounding the crash site as utterly tragic, adding that the scorched corpses inside the bus were, quote, only slightly more lifeless than before the deadly accident. Evidence suggests that most of the victims suffered during the crash and for many years before they even boarded the bus. All I can say is, thank God no one made it. Al-Qaeda is refusing to carry out any further terrorist attacks until the U.S. mass transportation infrastructure is drastically improved, calling the country's roads and bridges a, quote, travesty, unbecoming of a developed first world nation. We want to turn your bridges into rubble. But if we took credit for making them collapse, no one would ever believe us. This is the Onion News Network. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, you dial toll-free here, 855-450-FREE, and bring up anything you would like, 855-450-3733. Join us online over at freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features waiting for you. And uh, here at Free Talk Live, we appreciate good audio quality. And I can tell you that in Freedom's Cause, the new audio theater piece that is available to you. It's over two hours in runtime over at infreedomscause.com. is very well produced. The sound effects are excellent. The soundtrack, the actual uh, score, is apparently originally produced, which I was impressed with. Yeah, that's really impressive. It sounds really nice, and uh, the voice acting is also very good. It has uh, name actors like Joanne Froggett from Downton Abbey, Billy Boyd of Lord of the Rings, Skandar Keynes from Chronicles of Narnia, as well as James Cosmo from Braveheart. And the story itself is that of William Wallace, who, you know, if you have seen Braveheart, you'll uh, remember some of it, but it's more historically accurate over at infreedomscause.com. Now, there are a couple of characters who are fictional, but basically you're seeing the uh, the history through their eyes. Yeah. and uh, Or hearing, I guess you're hearing the history through their 
eyes or ears. It, or it feels like you're seeing it. I mean, you certainly it's it's brought to life for well, you. Yeah, well, that's the fun of audio theater is you don't have to watch anything. The theater's in your mind, and uh, you get to use your imagination, which of course makes it great for kids. And this, I think, is a it would be a great gift for kids. In fact, you can get four copies of it, the family four pack. Uh, for half price by using coupon code FTL over at InFreedomsCause.com. You can also get a study guide for it. It's a real crash course in the struggle for freedom. Go to InFreedomsCause.com. Use coupon code FTL to get, again, that family four-pack for half price. InFreedomsCause.com. As we continue here, the story is out of BuzzFeed.com about the new restrictions that went into effect two weeks ago, beginning of December on porn production in the United Kingdom. And they are prohibiting porn companies from uh, from filming and selling this kind of pornography. And they're calling it extreme porn uh, involving, you know, spanking, caning, and whipping that they say are not allowed beyond what they call a gentle level. Uh, life-endangering activities such as strangulation or face-sitting cannot be carried out. No fisting allowed. Uh, insertion of other large items also prohibited. Bound and gagged models may not be featured as there needs to be a clear way in which the model could withdraw consent. So I guess the suggestion being because of the gag, uh, they would not be able to say, hey, I don't want to do this anymore. And so therefore, uh, those scenes are also illegal, as well as golden showers. That's also banned uh, according to these regulations. So there's been a fa a face-sitting protest that has gone on because, you know, doing some of those other things in public probably is going to get you arrested. But you can sit on somebody's face without uh, any real issue. I always thought that was the strangest of the things that were banned. I mean, I I, I thought, you know, I mean, I, caning, fisting, things mm -hmm. like that. I'm like, whoa, whoa, that's pretty, you know, that's not stuff that I uh, would consider sort of normal behavior. But uh, cunnilingus I would consider to be sort of normal behavior. And that's... Uh, you know, in a position where the uh, the you know female partner is on top, uh, mm. not not this is not abnormal. No, it doesn't seem that uh, that abnormal. You know, the the, the the whole Mart, Reverend, Reverend Martin Niemöller thing. First, they came for the uh, the trade unionists, and I wasn't a trade unionist, so yeah. I said nothing. That kind of thing. Well, when you come for people, you should not come for the large group of people. So I'm just thinking that this is a pretty large group of people, right? Like. <laughs> Well, either way, Mark, it's funny that you bring the Martin Niemöller quote up because somebody made a uh, variant on the famous poem from Pastor Martin Niemöller. It came out originally during World War II, and the variant here, and I think it's appropriate, uh, first they came for the fister, and I did not speak out because I was not a fister. Then they came for the spanker, and I did not speak out because I was not a spanker. Then they came for the squirter, and I did not speak out because I was not a squirter. By the way, female ejaculation apparently has also been banned. Also, wow, right, on the like list. can't That's help sexist. that. <laughs> uh, then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. And it's absolutely spot on. This, by the way, is this rings similar to some of the things that have happened in the United States over the last several years, from as far back as the Bush administration, but also it went on during the Obama administration, which was the targeting of so-called extreme porn producers here in the U.S. They never outright banned the production, but what they did do was they found reasons to go after the producers, calling them uh, extreme pornography and what are, I forget you some know, of the terms they use. This but. word extreme is thrown around a lot, and I could understand some of these bannings. Like, I'm trying to put some logic behind it and say, well, the politicians are looking out for people's safety, right? They don't want this to be a model for behavior. They can't give their endorsement of these acts, right? As politicians, they have to say, oh, we're a bunch of prudes, and we're yeah, going to keep a, things moderate here. Why? We would never. A, a yeah. Never. But, but a lack of a prohibition is not an endorsement. Well, I understand that, okay. but these are politicians, <laughs> right. and they're different. So, right. but they want to make it sound like they're doing something They want to make it sound like they're protecting you and keeping you safe. So a lot of these have to do with safety. Not caning. I get that. That could be dangerous. Not spanking. Hard, that makes sense. They say light spanking is okay. So it's, it's about protecting you. But what's really offensive here is that the one thing that seems to fall out of line is the squirting. That's just sexist. There's no justification oh, for absolutely. banning that. <laughs> they, you're right. They didn't ban male ejaculation. They banned female 
uh, ejaculation. But all of that aside, though, Derek, I mean, the obvious point to rebut what you've what you've pointed out there. I know you're not taking that that position, but uh, the obvious point about this safety thing is that all of the actors are consenting to it. So you know, whoever it is that's in Spanker's Part Six, uh, you know, they consented to be in that production, knowing that they were going to be caned or whipped or whatever. And you know, if they didn't know, they could certainly have said, "Whoa!" when the when they pull out the whip and said, "All right, get on your hands and knees." Uh, the actor could have said, whoa, whoa, that wasn't in my contract. I am out of here. Because at, a, at every single point along that process of making that pornography, everyone is giving their consent. And the, the scary part is that now that these things have been made illegal, people who are making these things, because they're still going to be made. They're just right. going to have to be underground. And when you take pornography... Just like with the drug world, you make drugs illegal, then drugs become more dangerous in a lot of ways. They can become, you know, impure. The sales on the streets are questionable. You don't know what you're getting. Uh, well, in the same thing with pornography, when you put that underground, then you get questionable production, questionable producers, people who, you know, they don't have any reputation. They're just, uh, they might even abduct some of the people well, who are uh, being involved in it and then forcing people into these situations. If that it's above happen. ground, if it's not prohibited, they can have contracts and they could be out in the open. They could right. be enforced by the courts. contracts be enforced. That would be the important part. You know, as bad as the courts are, at least there would be some recourse for people who uh, have a contract violation. But sure. when it's underground, when there's, uh, you know, when they're per- participating in acts that are prohibited, there's no way they can bring that to the, the cops. So and that's the real fear for me is that this prohibition will result in actual abuse in, you know, actors signing on for a production without even knowing the company that they're dealing with and then, mm-hmm. you know, being whipped while they're tied up when maybe they only signed on to be spanked while they were tied up and mm-hmm. then, of course, having no way of, uh, you know, taking that into any kind of just uh, justice system you know, to sue whoever that person was. So I'm hoping that, you know, worst case, the productions will simply move to France or, you know, some other place rather than go underground. But they may very well go underground for, you know, means of convenience and all of that, which is very scary. I just, I sort of wonder about... This is is how you lead to snuff films, by the way. This is how you get get to that point. I would say that you're exactly right on that. But I'm just wondering, is the UK porn industry large? I, I would just think that, you know, I, maybe I'm obviously, obviously I'm American centric here in my mm. life. I'm living well, over gonna here. it's not going to be as large, I don't expect, as, you know, porn made in the United States. But uh, I, I, there certainly is UK porn out there. Obviously, there I must mean, be some. People, I imagine, like to hear uh, folks speaking in their own accent when they're watching pornography. I presume that there's some demand for that. Yeah, I suppose there is. So, uh, toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. That's a list, uh, and I imagine it is a somewhat restricted list of some of the things that are being born, uh, banned, because I know I had seen that the female ejaculation is banned, but it's not shown on this list here over at BuzzFeed.com. Essentially, it can't be legally sold in a sex shop with an R18 rating, uh, or if it cannot be legally sold in a sex shop with an R18 rating, a film cannot be sold online in the United Kingdom. To fans and Can you creators, give it away? I, th- I think most of the stuff's given away. Most porn's given away? I don't think so. What what is Pornhub? I have no idea. It's a site where they give away porn. All right. There's more coming up here in moments. Somebody's got to be making money off of this. They're paying their actors. I don't know how they do it. Uh, More coming up here. This is Free Talk Live. Share your thoughts. For all of you who are inspired to create your own unique holiday cards and gifts. For all of you, there's Vistaprint.com. At Vistaprint.com, creating personalized holiday cards is simple. Choose from hundreds of designs and add your own photos and special messages. And there's 60% off. Plus, personalized one-of-a-kind gifts are also to 60% off. It's our best deal of the season. But hurry, offer ends December 7th. The only way to get this incredible deal is to go to Vistaprint.com, click the microphone in the upper right corner, and enter code RADIO60. Vistaprint.com, code RADIO, the word 60. Are you searching for your soulmate someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the nsa stop searching with easy dns you found a keeper easy dns does it all domain names web hosting and managed wordpress hosting easy dns stands up for your internet freedom and with servers in canada they do not cooperate with the nsa go to easydns.com you'll love their services or get a full refund they guarantee it and they accept bitcoin that's easydns.com The experts at Web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current Web.com customers. We've used and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than Web.com. 
Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Khalid lives in Gaza. He makes his living as a taxi driver. The engine in his old beater blew up. Now, he makes good money driving people in his cab, but he couldn't afford the $1,300 for a new engine. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the engine, and he's back on the road. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference. One cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can take control toll-free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Porn being criminalized. In the United Kingdom, not all porn. They've started with the extreme porn, which is, of course, what the pretty much the same tactics were here in the United States. Here in the U.S., they haven't banned outright the production of these things. However, they have targeted the individual producers of some of this. Uh, the more noteworthy one was a man calling himself Max Hardcore as his stage name. He produced some pretty disgusting, despicable stuff, um, and they uh, the government went after him. They charged him with obscenity violations, and they put him in prison. And he's not the only one. And, of course, because he's sort of on the periphery of porn production, not many people stood up for him. And he went down. And it was really, it was really sad. Um, and as I said, he's not the only person who's been targeted. Now in the UK, they're going after all porn production that has certain types of content that some people might consider uh, more extreme, and it's the same tactic. Let's go with the out. Go after the outliers. Take after. Take out the little guys who don't have as much, and you know, fans. As far as you know, they're not making as much money. They won't be able to as easily hire an attorney to defend themselves, and and it's the same old process going on yet again. Except they've gone so far there as to actually ban the production of these things and to ban the sale of them, and that has resulted in an outpouring of support. Uh, physically of people protesting out in front of parliament. We'll continue the story here in a moment. There's more than one way to do your holiday shopping this season, so don't get your tinsel in a tangle. Uh, you can, if if you're, somebody on your list has taste buds, 
I think Sherry's berries is a pretty safe bet. Mm-hmm. Um, these berries are dipped in dark chocolate, white chocolate, milk chocolate. I'm not even that big of a white chocolate fan, but I think the white chocolate berries are my favorite. I just want to give some idea that these are among the best things I've ever put in my mouth. <laughs> when you go to the grocery store, uh, you, you can never be sort of sure whether a berry is going to be good or not. You get a box of them, and half of them are great, and half of them are sour. Nothing like this ever happens. These are premium berries. The uh, they're, they're beautiful, decorative, delicious. The one thing that I'd warn you is double your order. You're mm. going to get an opportunity to do that. For ten bucks more, yeah. For ten bucks more, it's uh, nineteen ninety nine, or and and you can double it for ten dollars more. Do that. Trust me, you're going to wish you had once this box shows up. Because yeah. if you're end up gonna if you're gonna be in the vicinity of these, a normal person's gonna want to consume. I think I ate five in a sitting and kind of yeah. felt bad about that's, it. That's the only disappointment with Sherry's Berries is when you run out. And so yeah. doubling the order will help put that off. Yeah, put it off. <laughs> berries.com. That's B-E-R-R-I-E-S.com. Um, you can also call 866-FRUIT-02. That's 866-FRUIT-02. When you go to the website, berries.com, click on the microphone. It's on the uh, in the upper right-hand corner, and then type in FTL. That's how you're going to get the, the the special savings that they that they have for us. So um, go do it. You've got to uh, – it's coming this week. There's only one way to get it. You get this amazing 1999 from Sherry's Berries, and that's to go to berries.com and, uh, you know, Click FTL. Click on the upper the microphone in the upper right hand corner. Use FTL, or you can call eight six six fruit zero two. It's a perfect gift without all the hassle. Will they ask when you call uh, how you found out about them? Yeah, they'll okay. ask you if there's a code, and okay, you can use deal. FTL in that uh, circumstance. So it's uh, it's really great. I, I recommend it. Yeah, me too. I love the Sherry's Berries. So again, berries.com, click the top right microphone, type in FTL to get the deals. Uh, Continuing here with the story from BuzzFeed.com. It's mostly pictures, and some of them are pretty entertaining. Uh, Some very creative uh, porn fans have come out to show their support. (laughs) For the uh, well, support for the producers who are now prohibited from producing certain types of pornography, they have uh, some very creative signs like this one: "You're in for a shock if you expect us to stop." Uh, <laughs> oh God! <laughs> there's another one here uh, with a picture of one of the British MPs, I guess, one of these British characters that wants to ban pornography, and uh, shows his face. Says, "Can't make his wife squirt. Bans it in porn." Going on here. And uh, so then, without warning, the face sitting began just yards away from the Parliament building. Uh, Pictures of that are taking place. Now, people are fully clothed in this uh, particular situation. I imagine, you know, they didn't want to risk arrest for actually performing the sex act, but they were certainly simulating it. Uh, One man wore a snorkel before being sat on in an attempt to mock the supposedly life threatening danger posed by face sitting which is the alleged reason why face-sitting was one of the things that has been banned uh, from porn in the U.K. It just seems really silly to me. Uh, one man really? I mean, how many how many people have accidentally died from uh, cunnilingus? <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see those statistics. <laughs> I just, I mean, it has to have happened, right? But, but, but uh, yeah, I doubt that. Suffocated? You know. Anyway, uh, one man started a chant while being sat on. I thought he liked it. What do we want? Face sitting. When do we want it now? <laughs> James is on the line. He's in St. George, Utah, listening to KZNU. Hello, James. Hi. Hey there. You're on the air. Great. So I'm enjoying this kind of intelligent discussion about this issue. Porn is such a controversial issue, and um, I enjoy the logical perspectives being shared. I just want to add one other perspective because it seems that all the views that you're sharing so far are based on the assumption that porn only affects those who are making it or or viewing it, purchasing it and viewing it, um, or consuming it however they consume it. Are you suggesting it affects someone else other than the people who watch it? It sounds like he is. Let's let's a little... um, Yeah, I want to hear more. Okay. Um, So, and, you know, the role of government is to mitigate rights and to ensure that everyone has as many rights as possible, um, you know, that we step on each other's toes as little as possible. Well, for example, um, I believe that porn contributes to the sexualization of society in general. And um, does that affect me? Yeah. Even if I don't view porn, 
when my wife is in public and she needs to nurse our baby, now all of a sudden my wife's breast is a sexual thing because that's how we've been conditioned to think about it. But there was and less porn was when I was growing up, and I can assure you that if a woman and and this was in you know the seventies and eighties, and I can assure you back then people didn't generally nurse out in 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 public. But I would have considered that a very interesting thing to look at as a young man. Um, so I, mean, I I don't know whether porn is causing the sexualization of nursing as much as people are sexual creatures, and you know. Parts are interesting. Well, people are horny, well, man. That's what they do. Are, and, Go ahead. I'm know, sorry. I, 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 a, I didn't hear what you said. People certainly are sexual creatures, but, and, you know, we were still on the tail ends of Victorianism, which dealt with sex through repressing it, and that's not a great way of doing it either. But the point is that the way people view each other generally in society is shaped by things like how we spend our free time and how we spend our money and what we do. I, I would agree so with you on that. The yep. idea, so the idea that pornography only affects those who consume it is off. And also there, there are, you know, countless studies um, that have to do with some of the behavioral changes to people who get like deeply addicted to it. Oh yeah. Um, and, and in my neighborhood, if, my children are out playing, and you know, they're they're suppose there's somebody, uh, a neighbor next to me. If I get to choose, do I want to have a porn addict neighbor or not? I choose not. Well, and so. Hold on. That so I don't know what you. I get where you're coming from, but we talk about prohibitions on. We, we talk about prohibitions here on Free Talk Live all the time. Prohibitions are a common uh, subject for us to talk about, and generally, the results of prohibiting something are quite bad, like really, really bad stuff. And so, I guess what? I, I, okay, you don't like porn. I got it. What do you want to do about it? Um, because you talked about the role of government, and that's to me. The, the results, the war on porn is going to be far worse and the casualties are going to be far higher than they are today with where you can, you know, pretty much find porn you want. I'm not saying there's no consequences to porn. I concur with you. There are consequences. I get it. But the consequences for the war on porn are going to be far worse. Yes, I do think I agree with you that um, and I agree with that general libertarian perspective that when you um prohibit something, you cause indirect and often negative uh, consequences. But I also think that you're making the assumption that it's either government is banning something or government is not. I don't think that's how the debate should be framed. It's which level of government, because when the federal government does something, that causes certain implications. But when a local government does something, it can do it in a more narrowly tailored way. I'd like to hear what you are going to propose here in a moment. If you don't mind, hang on. We'll bring you back, James, after the news. More with James, hopefully, because I'd like to hear his vision for what he's talking about. What does he want a local government to do uh, about porn? It's Free Talk Live. You've heard of Black Friday doorbuster deals. Well, don't miss Lumber Liquidator's Floor Buster deals. Get incredible discounts on your favorite floors at one-time only prices. There's never been a better time to get a great deal on pre-finished hardwoods, hand-scraped hardwoods, gorgeous bamboo, top quality laminates, and get 26 months special financing. Plus, get even more Floor Buster discounts in our stores. The sale ends Tuesday. So these deals will not wait until after the holidays. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. 
Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, December 15th, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,222, silver around $17.02, and Bitcoin is trading around $353.50. Today's precious metal prices brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by eFoods Direct redefining the way you think about storable food. With civil unrest occurring all across the country, being food secure has never been more important. Visit eFoodStrack.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 to learn more about food security in a time of crisis. In the news, on Sunday, Judge Army Colonel James Pohl canceled a scheduled hearing for the September 11th trial, the latest in a number of delays. The hearing, which was scheduled for Monday, was supposed to investigate the actions of the FBI, following revelations that the Bureau had attempted to turn a witness into an informant. The Washington Free Beacon reports the hearing was canceled and not likely to take place on Tuesday, which means the trial would be postponed until February. Early Monday, police in Hong Kong cleared out the last three protest sites as the two-month-long Occupy Central campaign came to an end. About 100 officers removed barricades from a shopping center as protesters exited the scene. Police had already cleared protesters from a large protest site next to government headquarters and from the Mongkak district. The AP reports the activists believe the Chinese government is launching a covert campaign to subvert future protest efforts. A judge in Arizona has ruled that the state's public records law does not require the Tucson Police Department to release records related to stingrays or cell site simulators. Robert Bo Hodai sued the TPD in March to force the document's release. The department argued that the release of any details would give criminals a roadmap for how to defeat the device. Judge D. Douglas Metcalf found that the Public Records Act exempts documents that could cause harm. Today's broadcast of the Liberty Beat is made possible by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Did you know you can support the Liberty Beat when shopping on Amazon.com? Just log into your account after clicking our Amazon affiliate link at libertybeat.com slash Amazon. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, December 15th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. On Friday afternoon, Harris County, Texas District Attorney Devin Anderson announced that her office would allocate $1.9 million towards the purchase of body cameras for Houston area police officers. The plan calls for $1 million for the Houston Police Department and $900,000 for the Harris County Sheriff's Office deputies in the patrol division. Only days before the sentencing of journalist Barrett Brown, the federal government is once again seeking to suppress information related to the case. Brown has been jailed for more than two years on a variety of charges related to his journalism and threatening a federal agent. He's scheduled to be sentenced on Tuesday in Dallas, Texas. Federal prosecutors filed their arguments for the maximum sentence of eight and a half years under seal. Well, that means that Brown's attorney's sentencing memo requesting time served is also sealed. 
His lawyers filed a motion to unseal the memo in support of the public's right to access. The government is opposing the release of the memo. Judge Sam Lindsay is expected to rule on the matter today. Liberty Beat reporter Derek Bros will be reporting live from the sentencing on Tuesday in Dallas, Texas. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by My Magic Mud, detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Get a 150 application jar at MyMagicMud.com. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? The Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To find out details, just go online to thelibertybeat.com slash advertise. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, December 15th, 2014. Remember to check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. This is the Onion Week in Review. Thousands of outraged meth addicts urged the federal government this week to address the nation's growing spider epidemic. During a marathon 72-hour meeting under the Roosevelt Bridge Monday, tweakers from across the nation drafted a 45,000-word proposal to kill all the acid-shooting spiders before they develop the powers of mind control or, God forbid, flight. We can't grow these spiders any longer. The government has to... There's a spider there! <laughs> the addicts have agreed that the best temporary solution would be for the government to issue them large quantities of methane amphetamine and steel wool. A local daddy was put in his bye-bye box Tuesday so that he could go on a long vacation with the birds and clouds in the sky. The daddy, who was once tall and strong and liked going to the hospital to play with their fun machines, was reportedly put in the bye-bye box after weeks of being sleepy all the time and never finishing his din din. Family had come in from all over to watch daddy get dropped inside a cool underground fort full of dirt and sand, where he'll be tonight instead of being home to play shoots and ladders. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We invite you to bring up whatever you'd like, toll free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You may join us online as well over at freetalklive.com. And the features that you'll find there, they're totally free. So enjoy at freetalklive.com. We've got Skype. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. Just send a contact request first. We'll notice it, approve it, and then once that's done, it'll be easy for you to call via Skype. With you tonight, Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. Hey, don't forget to check out more of Derek J. on his website, derekj.me. You just put up a new video today, Derek J. Yeah, a friend of mine just got out of jail, a co-host here on Free Talk Live. That's right, our very own Daryl W. Perry, who is our Friday night co-host, who missed Friday night due to checking into the local jail, as we like to call sometimes the Keen Spiritual Retreat, for a restful weekend uh, in solitary confinement. Well, actually, it turned out that he wasn't truly in solitary over the weekend. They kept him in what's called classification. Intake, yeah. Had he been kept... uh, Well, no, he wasn't in intake necessarily. He made it into the cell block, but he was sort of sequestered away from the average prisoner that was in that particular cell block. Although when he was released uh, for his one hour per day outside of the cell meaning he could walk around the, the day room, he was out with the other people who were being s- sort of kept to themselves. So hmm. it was at that time that he was able to actually interact with some other prisoners. So technically not truly solitary confi- confinement, but apparently had they kept him in there for longer than three days, he would have been classified and likely then put into solitary confinement. So I'm sure we'll hear more from Daryl on Friday night about uh, his experience. And this is for not paying a fine, right? Just that refusing to pay a fine. For refusing to pay a fine. So, uh, Derek J., you recorded video of him being dropped off to jail on Friday, and you subsequently recorded again today when he was released. And that video is up at DerekJ.me? Yes, and at Freekeen.com. Excellent. You can get more of Derek there at DerekJ.me, including his various different media efforts. He does so much. Uh, lots of different radio shows like Peace News Now and a couple, a couple different Bitcoin shows. Yeah, on. Bitcoin Talk Show and The Bitcoin Group. Peace News Now was great last week. I caught uh, part of the episode with Garrett Ian from the Keen Robin Hood, and it's always you always do a great job Thanks. on that show. This week is going to be really exciting. I'll be interviewing a man who's talking about an armed march on Washington. Not very peaceful, oh, but no. that's coming up. Wow. Okay. Tomorrow. Yeah, definitely want to hear that. Tune in. 
So go check it out, DerekJ.me. We get back to James, who has waited patiently here uh, through the news. James, you called in in the last hour. For those of our listeners who are just tuning in, we had talked about the U.K. face-sitting protests that had gone on uh, last week, I think, outside of Parliament. And the reason why this protest was happening in the first place, because uh, mostly people don't sit on each other's face in public, but uh, because mostly. They, you know, because the UK government saw fit to go ahead and ban uh, all kinds of different sex acts from ma- being made into pornography, uh, then people decided they were going to protest by engaging in a simulation of one of those sex acts and sitting in uh, sitting on one another's faces. In fact, setting a record, from what I understand, of uh, no, no. world record for face sitting in one location as far as multiple, how many people w- were participating. I think we have uh, too many records. So we are sharing uh, details on that. And then you called in, James, to say that you don't believe that, and please correct me if I'm wrong, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but my understanding of what you said was that you don't believe that porn only involves the people who are consenting to the process of creating and viewing it. You think that it somehow has some sort of deleterious effect on society as a whole. And so, therefore, you're kind of making an excuse for government regulation, which you haven't really specified yet because we didn't have time in the last hour. So you had said that you can appreciate not having a prohibition and that the federal government isn't the right way to do things. And then you sort of started talking about local government. Where were you going with that, and did I get anything wrong? Go ahead. Well, no, that's about right. I, okay. I don't know that I have anything particularly intelligent to say as far as a specific local reform that I would recommend. But I do think that the point is valid that it depend, so much depends on which level of government is doing the regulating because the closer you get to local government, the more customized and narrowly tailored that regulation can be for a particular group and a particular um, culture. You know, if you live in a small rural town, those people are going to have different um, views and perspectives about something controversial like pornography than if you live in Las Vegas. And each group should be able to live in a place that accommodates their perspective to the degree that's reasonable and feasible according to to the place. Well, I, I have to say I, that I, I partially agree with what you're saying and that if you were to get together with a group of people who has a viewpoint that you share and you want to create your own like-minded community like, you know, Porn Freeville or something like that, uh, where, you know, there's some sort of regular searches of people's homes to make sure nobody's hiding any pornography, uh, if you want to consent to that sort of thing, that's certainly your business. But you don't have a right to tell somebody else what they can do or can't do in the privacy of their own home or in their backyard or wherever it is they want to produce and or view uh, pornography. And the idea that somehow having a majority of people in an area who agrees with you makes it okay to enforce your viewpoint on others is really not very freedom-oriented, and uh, that's kind of scary to me. Well, I can certainly appreciate that perspective, and I agree that we don't want warrantless searches and seizures going on, and I'm certainly not recommending that we implement that kind of a thing. But I also think that any any time you're talking about rights, you're not talking about absolutes. You're talking about balancing of interests. Take any right in the Constitution or the Declaration of Independence and take that right to an extreme, and now you've got tyranny going on. So everything is a balancing act, and that's why the Supreme Court uses... Tyr- the, take that, that right to an extreme and you've got tyranny? Can you explain that one to me? I'm a little yeah. lost. Well, how is yeah? Well, how is the freedom of speech, um, which I would assume be limited to your own property, um, how would that be a tyranny? Well, if the freedom of speech includes the ability to shout fire in a theater, or if it includes... That's not what freedom of words. speech is. Okay, so freedom of speech is where you can say what you want on your own property or on public property. Private theaters are privately owned, and so therefore they can tell you what you can and can't do in there. You can't, uh, you know, turn your cell phone on speaker mode and, you know, allow someone to start shouting over the phone. You can't generally start shouting. You can't shout fire. Also, if you have ever been in a crowded theater and shouted fire, it doesn't do anything. Right. Well, we're just speaking hypothetically, but then take the same thing to a public forum. Can a person standing on a public street corner wear a shirt that says, you know, something, I was going to say something profane, but we can't get around there. Suppose it says something very profane. F the N-words. 
That would be pretty uh, sure. profane. Yes, yeah. yes they yeah, should they, be able to fr- yes. be free to do that. Precisely, they should be able okay. to do that. Okay, and now I'm walking down the street with my seven-year-old mm-hmm. who's just learning to read Yep. Um, and is reading things like that. You're telling me that that person standing on the corner, their ability to wear that shirt doesn't impact me or my family. Well, I think that it, it impacts it. I mean, you take chances when you go out in public. Uh, for instance, there used to be, when I was growing up, uh, there was the S Happens bumper sticker. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's a pretty profane word, and there was a certain amount of controversy about it, but it didn't stop people from putting S Happens on the back of their car. And, uh, you know, so my mom had to have a conversation with me about that right. and how that went. How and, dare you be put in a position uh, where you have to have a, an honest conversation conversation with your kids about profanity or whatever. I mean, this is, you know, this is really disturbing to me, this viewpoint. And it's not the first time it's been been proffered on this program by a, by a caller. The idea that you exercising your rights would somehow have some sort of tangential effect on the world in which other people who don't agree with the exercise of that right are living in, and so therefore those other people should be able to control you and stop you from exercising your right, whether it's uh, you know watching pornography or producing pornography or smoking marijuana or having a shirt on it, uh, you know wearing a shirt that says "F you" or something like that. These are all things that do not directly affect you, and that they do not cause you harm. Now you can claim that uh, that your harm by the virtue of the fact that you have to now you feel like you have to have a conversation with your kids but that's the risk you take going out into public where you might see somebody with an fu shirt on uh i'm sorry if you don't like that then maybe you should live in a place where everybody is crystal clean and there's no profanity allowed that's not a government where 100 percent of the people have agreed to it like the ave maria town ave maria down in near fort myers they're they're having this sort of catholic town i think it's a fascinating idea good luck James, and thank you for the call tonight. I appreciate it. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You may take control of the airwaves here. Uh, you can bring up anything that you'd like, though you can't say the F-bomb on Free Talk Live. More coming up. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leading them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't tread on meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't tread on meme, M E M E, helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value. And they look neat, too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. 
This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at DontTreadOnMeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't Tread on Meme, your path to a voluntary society with honest money. DontTreadOnMeme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. More on the fence, fence sitting. Why am I saying fence sitting? Face sitting. I guess fence sitting is more commonly discussed uh, publicly than uh, than face face sitting is. But we've got this. Uh, there's this face sitting protest happening in the UK over a porn ban. It led to a conversation about rights, and I want to I want to continue on that conversation about rights as well and talk about the Ave Maria town, which we mentioned at the very end of the last segment. I've uh, done a little digging, and maybe Mark, things were not as we thought they were with this Ave Maria. town town. We'll talk about that here in what was supposed to be this sort of private Catholic town, but it's uh, it seems as though it has been misrepresented in the media. Hmm, that's interesting. Do you want to reach people with the ideas of liberty? You can do it from the back of your car with libertystickers.com. You can reach thousands of people with a bumper sticker, and depending on where you live, you can reach tens of thousands uh, a week. You know that uh, you know people love to read bumper stickers. I don't know about you, but I found myself scooting up in uh, you know the traffic light just to be able to take a good look at that bumper sticker. Uh, so you can check out the vast selection of witty, poignant, pithy, and downright bombastic liberty-oriented messages at libertystickers.com. It's fun to just scroll through them and read them. Libertystickers.com. So we had a guy on the phone a moment ago who was explaining why he believes that people pushing their rights too far, in his opinion, results in tyranny. The idea being, as I understood it, that uh, if he's walking his seven-year-old child down the street and someone's standing there with a S Happens t-shirt on, that uh, it's tyranny because he will then have to do something in regards to explaining that to his child. It sounds like he just wants more uh, freedom of choice in his own world. Like he wants to be able to limit uh, the exposure that his child might see to these ideas. I can empathize a little bit. It's a tragedy of the commons situation. It is Typically, a tragedy of the commons. We wouldn't be walking around these streets that are owned by governments. We would be perhaps on private property owned by corporations or people, and it's it, it would be. Pr- Kmart wouldn't allow a guy to stand with an offensive shirt to make all his customers angry. They would say, hey, you've got to leave or you can't be on this sidewalk. Sure, right? but Derek, I mean, are you really advocating uh, streets that uh, where the, whoever it is the street owner is is actually trying to dis- to control what clothing can be worn by the people who are walking down that street? I, think I imagine, yeah, and there would be other places where um, there would be businesses that are trying to attract people of certain types of clothing mm-hmm. to, to stand and be out inside of our store. We want certain people who look like you to be out here. We're running a rave here. Yeah. Um, I think that that's uh, absolutely true, but I also think that there's it's dangerous to assume that you're going to create Pleasantville. Mm-hmm. Uh, that this is, uh, this is a... Uh, uh, it's this sort of th- the carrot that's dangled out in front of a certain classification of people because nobody wants their kids to grow up in a town where people are reading a bunch of uh, filth on their uh, 
you know, from their, their T-shirts and that sort of thing. I mean, nobody wants, particularly wants that. Uh, I mean, once you have kids, you suddenly get a, a more conservative in, in certain areas. But I was just telling the story of what it was like growing up when the S Happens bumper sticker was going around. Mm -hmm. You guys are a little young for that one, but uh, there literally were just, you know, I don't know, one out of 20 cars mm -hmm. in Bradenton, Florida, where I was growing up, had a bumper sticker that said S Happens, and it wasn't just the, the first letter. Um, sure. And so, you know, these are this was a conversation that my my mother, who was a Sunday school teacher, who sent me to uh -oh. Christian school, um, <laughs> and uh, you know, all these other things, had to have with me. As a matter of fact, she also had to talk about uh, when I went into bathrooms back back then. You would write on people wrote on bathroom walls, so I would go into the bathrooms and I'd read the things that people wrote on bathroom walls, and I'd come back and report them to my mother. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, I mean, she'd have to have these uncomfortable conversations. I'm sorry, the world full of uncomfortable conversations yeah, that's not tyranny to to you know be put into a position in which you have to have a conversation or you feel as though you have to have a conversation that you just can't ignore the man with the s happens t-shirt on that you have to address it to call that tyranny is ridiculous and it also is an abrogation it leads towards the destruction of the idea of rights you know, the idea of rights are that, uh, at least my understanding I don't believe is, rights are mitigated. That's what the caller was claiming, and um, I, I just disagree well, with that. Well, he said that's the role of government, is to mitigate rights, is what he said. And by all uh, evidence, that's exactly what that's they the do. That's the role they've taken for themselves. Uh, but well, I'm curious what it would take to really create one of these pleasant fills, because I would like to have it happen. Not because I'd like to join one, but because I'd like someplace for these people to be able to go. <laughs> like, I totally you agree. Know, hey, you know, you want to be in Prude Town? Go for it. I'll be over in Hedonism Town. You know what would be interesting, you, though? We can visit each other. I, I think it'd be fascinating if that actually did happen, Derek, because then we would get to see where all the prudes disagree on things, right? Because you, <laughs> if you put <laughs> a bunch still, of prudes... They won't be happy. Of course not. No, I mean, they, you put a bunch of prudes together, and then they'll all start getting... You you know, they'll take sides on other issues oh, that we've never seen them she taking sides peels on. Peels the skin off of apples, and you know they have yeah. all different. <laughs> <laughs> if she cuts the crust off of sandwiches, and you know, there's going to be stuff. things to complain about. So, um, so anyway, the idea behind rights is that you know these are good ideas to respect in other folks, so we can have the right to express ourselves in the way that we want to. And uh, if you you know if you try to control others in the rights that they can they can uh, utilize, then ultimately you shouldn't be surprised if those people try to turn around and then control you. They're gonna you know they'll <laughs> tell you oh well you don't want us to wear the S happens T-shirt. Well, we don't want you to be reading your Bible verses on the street corner either. And before you know it, nobody gets to have any fun anymore. They don't get to say the things they want to say. And we that's true tyranny is what he was talking about. To me, what he's saying is what leads down the road to tyranny to suggest that the choice the choices of someone as far as what they watch or what they say or what they wear is in some way affecting you in a negative fashion to where you should be able to tell them they shouldn't be able to do it they can't do it and if they do do it you're going to put them in a cage that to me is tyranny and by the way that's the only choice the cage putting that's something that we you really have to you got to own when you when you're looking at prohibitions whether they're on a large scale or a small scale right cuz he sounded like he was advocating it only by a local government but it's the same well, cage have, it's he, the same threat he didn't he wasn't sure how a p porn um you know ban on a local level would work and i i would I, you know i would applaud him in that and the fact that that you can simply cannot ban porn you can talk to people about the dangers of porn mm -hmm. but you can't really you can't ban it it's unless you're you're talking about banning the internet okay they've got <laughs> uh, osama bin right. laden a man who is willing to kill for his religion that does not believe in porn very strongly does not believe in porn had porn on his computer. Did he? So, yeah. That was one of oh, the big wow. scandals. So Osama Bin Laden had porn. I don't know whether it's true or not, but I'm going to go ahead and say that it is. Um, well, they fine. had porn Sounds in plausible. the Roman times, and I, I've heard of even cave paintings that were suggestive. I mean, it's going to be around forever. Indeed. Let's talk to Brock. He is also in St. George, Utah, listening to KZNU. Hello, Brock. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for taking my call. Oh, sure. I, um, first, I just wanted to say thank you guys for what you do. Um, I at first started listening to your program and thought it was funny and I didn't agree with anything that you guys really said, but as I listened and as I uh, opened my mind to the ideas, I've, I've really become a freedom-oriented person and I've been able to share actually a lot of these ideas with other people, excuse me, with other people like coworkers and friends, but I wanted to ask your guys' Fantastic. opinion. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Um, I want to ask your guys' opinion. You guys are talking about rights, 
and I wanted to ask your opinion about like the Westboro Baptist Church. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. Oh, yep. yes. Those despicable yes. people have rights, too. Very much so. Hang on, Brock. Yeah, we'll br- we'll so. bring you back for the discussion. Stand by. More with Brock. Westboro Baptist Church, some of the most offensive protesters out there. And, uh, you know, I have to stand with their right to do it. But we'll see exactly what Brock's question is in a moment. 855-453. You can take control here on Free Talk Live. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a free, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. 
This is Free Talk Live. You may dial toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We're talking about rights, among other things. Face-sitting protest in the U.K. Still have some highlights to share from that. Of course, you can also take control here and bring up anything you'd like. You can... Protect yourself online by using ProXPN. It's a global virtual private network that encrypts your data, meaning that your internet service provider, whoever they might be, can no longer snoop on what you're doing. They won't know what website you're visiting. They won't know where you're going, what you're up to. They won't be able to log it anymore. They're probably logging it right now, keeping track of all the sites, all the search terms you enter, maybe keeping those logs up to five years in some cases. You can put a stop to it by going to proxpn.com slash FTL. Get signed up there. You can actually start for free. They've got a free account, but it's bandwidth limited. Uh, when you're ready to unlock that account and go to unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can connect to, you can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites via their premium account. Just use our discount code. It's FTL50. That's FTL, like Free Talk Live, the number 50 to get you 50% off the price of their annual account, breaking the price down to just under 5 bucks a month. And that gets you the savings, that same savings, for the lifetime of the account, no matter what your choice is. Over there, proxpn.com slash FTL. Use promo code FTL50. Again, proxpn.com slash FTL is a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. So get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. Let's bring Brock back here. He's uh, in St. George, Utah. Brock, uh, we didn't really have enough time to get your thoughts out in the last segment, so go ahead with uh, what you were trying to get out there. Sure. Um, what my I just had a question for you guys. I I don't know how I feel about it, um, but how do you guys feel about you know people like the Westboro Baptist Church? Is there speech or um, ways to express yourself that is you know as like hate crime or you know, is that is, is there a speech so, uh, what's the word, extreme that, you know, it, it infringes on the rights of others? Uh, my answer is no. I mean, unqualified answer of no. There is no extre- extreme, too extreme speech. There is no speech that should be disallowed. Um, I think the answer to speech that's offensive is more speech, uh, not to shut down the speech of those who are offensive. Now, that's not to say I don't think that private property owners can't control these things. Like, so for instance, if you own a bar or a restaurant or someplace where people from the public are allowed to be, you do have a right to tell somebody, hey, you can't say that in here and, you know, please leave the premises. But as far as public property is concerned and as far as private property on which you, you know, the, the private property that you own, then you should be able to say, uh, whatever it is you darn well please, no matter how offensive it is. Do well, you guys agree? When you say you should be able to, I would say that there shouldn't be no uh, legal prohibition. I would yeah. also claim that uh, that you know society has a way of taking care of some of these things to some extent. Well, there's too. ostracism. Well, there, there's ass beatings too. Um, and now I'm not well, advocating that's not an appropriate. Uh, well, that, that's what your claim is. But it, like for instance, if I stood on the corner and uh, every couple that went by, I told, uh, I said, "Hey, buddy, hey, buddy, your wife's ugly," right? Like and and just kept doing that over time. Mm-hmm. Pretty quickly, I am going to uh, face the, the the knuckles of some irate individual, and. Few people that would not justify what that irate. What do you mean justify? Did. Meaning that might it, doesn't make right. It wouldn't I, be legal uh, <laughs> what that person did, and it wouldn't also be right what that person did. But what you are saying is true, Mark. It is an observation of reality. It's an that observation that of reality, and consider that a lot of people just don't care, right? Like if I get my butt beat, that there's nobody. People aren't going to be lining up to testify to the officers. Hey, you know, oh, it was terrible. That man got beaten up, and all he was doing was expressing mm-hmm. his opinion. Well, no, in, they're the, going to be like, good. In the case of the Westboro Baptist Church, they've come to where I was living on the corner of my street in Philadelphia, and I was glad to see the police defending the Westboro Baptist Church protesters from people who would do them harm. Absolutely. And in point of fact, uh, isn't it exactly what the Westboro Baptist folks want? I mean, don't they 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 want to be attacked? Because then you've, if you attack somebody over something they said, you're the one who's violated that person's rights, and you absolutely deserve to uh, pay a penalty and pay for their hospital 
hospital bills and then pay for their lost time and their lost you know ability to enjoy their lives. Absolutely, because it's wrong to use violence to solve problems. The best answer to the Westboro Baptist Church, in my opinion, was when Fred Phelps, the leader of the group, died. A week later, the group held a regular protest that they were attending, but without him, of course. Mm -hmm. And an opposing group showed up across the street with a banner maybe 10 feet wide that said, we're sorry for your loss. Oh, that's nice. Well, I thought that was I, a nice sentiment because they used speech. That's not my favorite one. My to, favorite one is where across the street from their church, somebody, I don't know if they bought or sold or whatever, but some house became under the control of one of the opposition of Westboro Baptist Church. And they painted, <laughs> they painted the house rainbow. <laughs> right across the street, which is also free speech. Yeah, that is cute. But yeah, more speech, the solution to speech you you don't like. So yes, do I agree Do I agree with Westboro Baptist Church? No, I don't agree at all with what they say or what I've heard that they say. Um, but do I agree with their right to express their despicable ideas? Yes, absolutely. And I will stand up for that. I think that's because if you put all the ideas out there, good and bad, the good ideas tend to float to the top and the bad ideas can be dismissed. Brock, what do you think? I, I really appreciate your guys' answer. I, I think I can, I can go with that. Thank All you right, very man. much. Hey, thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. Because free speech, we haven't touched on this yet, but the idea behind free speech is to protect the offensive speech. It's, it's absolutely true. Right? Free speech isn't popular speech. Yeah. Popular speech doesn't need to be free. People like it. Mm -hmm. Free speech is offensive speech. Whatever that speech might be, that's but but remember, free speech only has to do with the government. It doesn't have to do with private property. It doesn't have to do with individuals. Um, I th I think that there's there's a great deal of pressure on certain types of speech, and uh, you know those are societal, and that's how that goes. And there's nothing you don't have a right to not feel pressure. Yeah, that's certainly true. Which comes back around to the the thing that other caller was talking about earlier. He feels like he's pressured. When somebody's on the streets with a S Happens t-shirt, he feels like he's pressured yeah. into having to have a conversation with his son or daughter at age seven about what that means and why you shouldn't say it or, you know, whatever it is. And I agree with you, Mark. You know, just because you feel pressured is not the fault of the other individual. It should not abrogate their right to express themselves. And I don't support, by the way, if, if we did come to this reality where all property was privately owned— I would not want to support a company that owned like a sidewalk somewhere trying to tell someone they can't wear an S Happens t-shirt. While it would be legitimate for them to do that, I personally hope we don't go into that world. And I understand there could be towns like that. Hey, I am for that because I want to shop in that district. I want to be in uh, an area where there are nice stores where people are like, hey, get off of these streets. We don't want your, you know, we don't so want you your So you support the, the prohibition yes. on an S Happens t-shirt yes. on Outs private property? Outside of Hugo Boss, there should be a prohibition on that shirt. <laughs> you can't look ugly outside if you go boss you can't can't do this can't do that and then on other places they say yes we want you come here you know we, it doesn't matter what you're wearing no shoe no shoes no shirt we'll still serve you yeah i'd be more leaning towards uh patronizing places that are more allowing of people's free speech rather than more restrictive of it which takes me back to the discussion we were having earlier briefly we touched on this ave maria because we suggested mark you suggested and i kind of backed you up on this that the caller earlier who was disturbed by pornography, that he moved to this town which has pur been purported as a Catholic town. Uh, there were new news stories. This came out as long as, well, I think it was 2005 when it was first actually, you know, they broke ground on this. We've been talking about this for years. And the stories we read back then were that this was a Catholic town. The founder of Domino's Pizza is this devout Catholic, and he's you know one of the founders of this town, this Ave Maria, this sort of a planned community. And there were news stories about how like the Walgreens, like you know, big companies could come in and open a store, but they couldn't but sell condoms. They couldn't sell uh, not just condoms, but all kinds of birth control. They weren't allowed to do that. So even though your average Walgreens would certainly sell these things in order to get the the lease in mm -hmm. this private town. They were supposedly not allowed to sell certain things, which That's again, cool. I support their right to make those decisions. But according to the uh, the Ave Herald, which is ostensibly the local newspaper in Ave Maria, Florida, this is the Ave Maria stories that were wrong seven years ago are still wrong. An article about misunderstandings about this particular community, and according to this, one of the myths is that only Catholics live or would want to live in Ave Maria. So is this really a private town? It doesn't sound like it is. 
or if it is, it's not as restrictive as we were first led to believe that it is. We'll tell you more about it coming up here in moments, and uh, you can also share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. Khalid lives in Gaza. He makes his living as a taxi driver. The engine in his old beater blew up. Now, he makes good money driving people in his cab, but he couldn't afford the $1,300 for a new engine. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the engine, and he's back on the road. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference. One cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. For all of you who are inspired to create your own unique holiday cards and gifts. For all of you, there's Vistaprint.com. At Vistaprint.com, creating personalized holiday cards is simple. Choose from hundreds of designs and add your own photos and special messages. And there's 60% off. Plus, personalized one-of-a-kind gifts are also to 60% off. It's our best deal of the season. But hurry, offer ends December 7th. The only way to get this incredible deal is to go to Vistaprint.com, click the microphone in the upper right corner, and enter code RADIO60. Vistaprint.com, code RADIO, the word 60. The human body is extraordinary. Despite all the stresses we inflict upon it, it still works hard to stay in balance. Thousands upon thousands of people rely upon heart and body extract to help their body stay balanced. This excellent 100% natural herbal formula helps maintain healthy blood pressure levels, cleans arteries, promotes good circulation, balances cholesterol, and more. HB extract paired with healthy lifestyle choices like good nutrition and exercise can give you a life free of pain, sickness, and fear. Recapture your youthful vitality and experience your body healing itself with the aid of hb extract it's extremely effective and it starts working in just days visit hbextract.com to learn more and to read scores of testimonials from satisfied customers and we've never increased our price in over 10 years that makes heart and body extract as great a value now as it was the first day we sold it a healthy heart is a happy heart call 866-295-5305 or go to hbextract.com If you're David, a few well-chosen words can help level the playing field with Goliath. I'm Holland Cook from SurvivalSpeech.com. Recently, I saw a Yellow Pages ad for an appliance repair company, and the headline read, Why Wait for Sears? If you're going to the Yellow Pages, the Dead Sea Scrolls of Advertising, you're ready to buy right now. So this is an attention-grabbing message. And how about the plumber whose radio ad says, Call by noon Thursday, and we'll be there Saturday at no extra cost. Smart guy. Most plumbing firms give their crew the weekend off. This one gives them Sunday and Monday off. In the words of a respected advertising executive, cut to the chase, make it quick, and tell me exactly what you can do for me, especially if you're looking for work. For more tips on critical communication skills for the way things are now, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Turns out maybe this Ave Maria Florida thing isn't what we thought that it was for many years on Free Talk Live. Uh, The news headlines had made it out to uh, sound like it was like some kind of private town created by Catholics, you know, sort of devout Catholics where they wanted to come and just sort of have a community in which they could 
that would be more theirs. It would be more more to their liking, more to the liking of someone who has a very devout Catholic belief system, which I supported. You know, I don't, I'm not a Catholic, but I support their right to have that. I think they they should. You know, if it's if it's private property, set whatever darn rules you want. If you want to stop the Walgreens from selling contraception, you know, it's your business. Right. I don't support it, but it's the, your business. Some hotels uh, support, you know, there's, there's nudist hotels, there's regular hotels, really? there's high end hotel, hotels. There's well, What do you think a nudist resort is? Okay. Yeah, it's, I guess you're right. I, uh, I just um, always thought it was a place where people lived rather than stayed temporarily. No, it's it's definitely a temporary thing. Huh. Um, you know, they've got all these things. It's, you know, it's just different tastes and that sort of thing. I think that should be true in communities too. Um, I, I'm. I think that there should be competition for people. Let's let's find out who wants to live where. So, you know, no big deal. So uh, we were getting into some of the details here from the Ave Herald. This is the local newspaper there because Ave Maria is apparently a thing. It started back in 2005, I think is when it was founded, and they opened up in 2007, according to this. And the repeat, they're saying here that uh, misinformation has been put out on various different websites that are that it's just it's not correct they claim about Ave Maria and it sounds like we may have been victim to some of these news stories that may not have been well researched uh, that we talked about here on Free Talk Live over the years. By the way, you can join us online at freetalklive.com and if you like what we're doing, please support the show by becoming a Free Talk Live amplifier. You go to amp.freetalklive.com and you can send 5 bucks a month into Free Talk Live. It helps us out a lot by helping us get on more radio stations. We can use that money to reach out to new stations to get the ideas of liberty on the air. You heard a, our gentleman caller earlier saying thank you to Free Talk Live that we helped, you know, him understand the ideas of liberty that, you know, when he started listening, uh, he was in one place and now he's a lot more freedom friendly so we've heard those stories many times over the years and they're great we love hearing those we love hearing that and that's part of the reason why we do free talk live is to get the message of freedom out there and to express it in a way that's understandable at least we hope and that people can uh, encounter and hopefully been learn doing from. it a long time <laughs> yeah so if you like what we're doing please go to amp.freetalklive.com you can get signed up with any major credit card through paypal or use visa or mastercard right there on the site and get perks like access to the amp only call in lines the amp only podcast uh, which doesn't have the regular commercials that uh, the regular podcast does we also have uh, the amp only facebook group which is also a lot of fun so you get some perks and it's only five bucks a month it makes a big difference for us so please go to amp.freetalklive.com Again, that's amp.freetalklive.com, and, and I will thank you in advance for doing so. All right, here's a story from AveHerald.com. Uh, going over some of the myths about their community, they say that the Ave Herald uh, is an independent publication that has no affiliation with the town developers or Ave Maria University, which is a Catholic university uh, based in the town. It's been published since the fall of 2008, and they claim to be a factual record of life in the town. During those six years, this was published this year in November, this article. Uh, during those six years, we have spoken either on the phone or in person to reporters from news organizations in the U.S. and Europe seeking background for stories they plan to do about a town where the residents have no rights. A town that is run dictatorially by Ave Maria University founder Tom Monahan, that was also the founder of Domino's Pizza, Domino's Pizza yeah. and a place where only Catholics live. None of these stories ran in any respected legitimate media outlets, and there was a reason for this. The facts got in the way. Here, for anyone interested in the truth, are the most oft-repeated myths about Ave Maria and the reality. Myth. Only Catholics live, or would want to live, in Ave Maria. Reality. There are people of all faiths, and some with no faith, living in Ave Maria. Some come because the homes are a good value. Others come to live by a golf course, as many people in Florida do. And yes, some come because the town is built around a Catholic university and offers a family-friendly environment for people of all religious beliefs. There is even land set aside in the town by the developers for a non-Catholic place of worship. And a significant percentage of students at Ave Maria University are not Catholic. I can tell you that um, when you're looking at schools in town that are private schools, private religious schools, you will find that uh, the Catholic school tends to have the largest population of people who, uh, you know, just sort of disagree. Um, private schools usually tend to be uh, better as far as an education goes. Mm -hmm. So a lot of parents will choose a private school. They will choose the ones that, uh, you know, that academically please them before they choose the ones that sort of the religiously please them. So you'll find people, you know, Jewish people, uh, Protestant people, all different kinds of folks sending their kids to Catholic schools. 
because they feel like it's the best one in town. When I was growing up, uh, it was sort of, you know, there was there were two private schools that uh, were sort of in competition for the title of the best school in town. And the, you know, there's no doubt that St. Joe's produced some really <laughs> St. Stephen's um, and then they graduated St. Joe's. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, it's been a long time. So St. Stephen's certainly produced some good uh, good kids. I mean, they, they you know, they they were academically one of the best schools in town. Myth. Access to media such as cable television is restricted to prevent residents from watching certain types of programs. Reality. Entertainment choices are unrestricted in Ave Maria. The cable provider in town is Comcast, and the service is exactly the same as what's available in every other community in Collier County, Florida, that Comcast serves. In addition, many residents opt for satellite television services that are similarly unrestricted. Also, there is unfettered high-speed Internet access. The, false, the falsehood stems from an off-the-cuff comment made in 2004 by Mr. Monahan that he quickly retracted. Uh, they go on saying myth. Well, at least they point out that there was an off-the-cuff comment yep. that uh, caused that. Because off-the-cuff comments can cost a lot of things. Sure. Residents in Ave Maria have no vote on anything. Reality. People in Ave Maria vote the same way people do in all other unincorporated areas of Collier County, which include much of the greater Naples area and nearby town of Immokalee. Now, it's interesting that this is considered an unincorporated town. What does that mean? I've never really been able to figure it out. There's, you know, the, like most of the towns and cities here in New Hampshire are considered municipal corporations. They are incorporated. And usually you'll see on a town sign, it'll say incorporated in and then, you know, 1790 or 1800. Or An unincorporated like town is a place with a name. That's what it is. It has no government uh, specifically for it. It is just what we call a postal district. Hmm. Um, so... You know, for instance, uh, so there is no city council of Ave Maria, is what you're saying, as I understand it. Okay. Um, so, uh, yes, I mean that would be that would be as I understand what an unincorporated town is. So, uh, for instance, Ian, you're from Sarasota, Florida. Um, there are that's incorporated. That's incorporated, but yeah. Vamo is not. That's a area south of uh, Sarasota, bef- mm-hmm. um, you know, north of. Uh, Nokomis and those sorts of things. It's just an area of town. Fruitville, for mm-hmm. instance, is another one. Now they've now it just seems like a road, but there was a place called Fruitville at one point yep. um, in Sarasota, and it's just a name. It's not a. It's just a sort of a name for a place. But this is different, right? Like because no. Ave Maria has a website, and there's you know a, there's a there's a push to move people there. Yeah, it may not be what we expected that it was. the 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 way that it was proposed, or at least the way it was being reported on back in well, almost a decade ago now, was that this was going to be a private town. And it doesn't quite sound like that. If it was that, because it sounded like they were buying hundreds of acres, and then you know. Selling those acre acreage with certain restrictions on yeah, it. Yeah, it sounded like a big deed, Catholic deed restricted community. That's the way it sounded. And now but, the local newspaper is saying that's just not the case. It's basically a Catholic free state project where you just move in and um, you know share our values or whatever. Sounds like that could be more uh, more of an accurate Sounds description. Sounds pretty cool to me. So residents, uh, again, they say, yes, you can vote. You're just voting in the county because, again, there's no city on which to uh, to vote. And uh, jumping ahead, they they get a little bit more detailed on the, apparently they have a special district called the Ave Maria Stewardship Community District. That sounds government-y. They say it functions as the equivalent of what most American towns would be a public utilities board. The kind of special district is not unique to Ave Maria, and there are many such districts overseeing a variety of functions throughout Florida. So I guess they, I don't know, they do stuff like sewage. Anyway... What's wrong with the Vatican? Isn't that where Catholics would want to move? I think there's a fairly small place, uh, you know, the Vatican City, if you're talking about. Yeah, isn't there already a a Catholic city? The the Vatican is entirely owned by the The Roman Catholic Church. They are not interested in you, uh, a working person, living there. (laughs) You can't move and live with the Pope? If you're like one of his people. If you're, you know, like If you're an employee. Yeah, okay. You wear one of those red gowns or something. Uh, Myth. Contraceptives are banned. Reality. The sale of contraceptives is not restricted by any town regulation. The supermarket in town is free to sell them. And although there is no drugstore yet in Ave Maria, I guess that Walgreens never opened up, uh, there are two national chain drugstores about 10 minutes away that sell every type of contraceptive. So that's I think that was interesting. You know, a little bit of info about Ave Maria we didn't know about. Previously, if you'd like to share your thoughts on intentional communities, which I think are a great idea, 
Uh, you're welcome to do that. 855 450 free. More coming up here. Uber surge pricing in the news again. People are upset. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You've heard of Black Friday doorbuster deals. Well, don't miss Lumber Liquidator's Floor Buster deals. Get incredible discounts on your favorite floors at one-time only prices. There's never been a better time to get a great deal on pre-finished hardwoods, hand-scraped hardwoods, gorgeous bamboo, top-quality laminates, and get 26-month special financing. Plus, get even more Floor Buster discounts in our stores. The sale ends Tuesday. These deals will not wait until after the holidays. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Ovaltine. Give your kids the nutrition they need to be their best. Visit us at OvaltineUSA.com. Telling your child about healthy food choices is important, but showing her what to eat goes a lot further. Have her help create the grocery list, then bring her to the store with you. Picking out healthy foods together helps kids get in the habit of thinking about what they're eating every day. For more tips like these, visit us at Parenthood.com slash Your Family Today. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, December 12th, 2014. Silver is trading at $17.07 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,224 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $352. Antiwar.com reports the Syrian civil war has gotten so convoluted and created so many rival factions that sometimes it's hard to know who is fighting against whom at any given time. It also gives rise to conspiracy theories. One of those theories is that the Islamic State and the Assad government are secretly in league since the two largest factions in Syria rarely clash directly and rather focus on the smaller players. It's not as though they never fight, of course. Syria launched high-profile attacks on the Islamic State's capital of Raqqa earlier this month, and the Islamic State is still bragging about the recent capture of a Syrian airbase in the Raqqa province. And while other rebels grouse about the comparatively little help from the Islamic State against Assad, it was really those rebels who started attacking the Islamic State in the spring, and the Islamic State has turned the tables on them, expanding their territory at the expense of the other rebels. For their part, the Islamic State is presenting the direct fight against Assad as step two, saying they need to consolidate the rebel territories first before they can make a serious run on Assad territory. Similarly, the Assad government is seeing the smaller rebels as easy pickings with the U.S. airstrikes and internal rebel fightings keeping the Islamic State mostly at bay. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports, 
Just hours before a potential government shutdown, the U.S. House of Representatives on Thursday passed a massive $1.1 trillion government spending bill. The funding bill passed with a vote of 219 to 206 with a majority of support from Republicans. Things were in doubt earlier in the day after the House took an unexpected recess around 2 o'clock for seven hours due to dissent on both sides of the aisle. Many Republicans were incensed that the proposed spending does not include language to defund President Obama's executive action on immigration. Democrats opposed amendments to Wall Street reform language in the bill. Though lawmakers in the House came to an agreement late Thursday, the bill still had to pass the Senate before midnight to avoid a government shutdown. The Senate approved a two-day extension of the current funding levels in order to give itself more time to review and vote on the legislation. In the House, 162 Republicans voted in favor of the bill, 67 rejected it, 57 Democrats supported, while 139 opposed. The spending bill, if signed into law, would fund the government through September, with the exception of the Department of Homeland Security, which runs out of money early next year. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. Antiwar.com reports CIA Director John Brennan angrily condemned the release of the summary of the Senate's CIA torture report, saying the report was flawed and incomplete and unfair to the torturers who were not interviewed for the report. The reason no CIA officials were interviewed by the Senate Intelligence Committee for the report? Well, that's because the Justice Department would not allow it because those torturers might face legal ramifications for all the laws they broke. Even Brennan conceded some of the things they did were a abhorrent, but shrugged off the notion of liability for anything, saying there was no easy answer and that it was unknowable if the torture really worked or not. FPP Radio will be taking a short hiatus while I spend the next three days in jail for refusing to pay a fine after being found guilty of a residency charge and operating a vehicle with expired registration. FPP Radio News will return on Tuesday, December 16th. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. On May 22, 1992, beloved talk show host Johnny Carson ended his 30-year run of hosting The Tonight Show with a farewell episode that included special guests Saddam Hussein, KKK Grand Wizard Virgil E. Griffin, and a musical performance by The Flag. On May 24, 1883, the Brooklyn Bridge opened, providing New Yorkers with a more efficient way of killing themselves and escaping their trash-ridden excrement cake city. The monument's historic opening was marked by hundreds of people jumping 275 feet to their deaths in order to avoid waking up every morning with the smell of horse filling their nostrils. Before the Brooklyn Bridge, there were very few ways for New Yorkers to free themselves from the cesspool in which they lived. One method was to tie cinder blocks on their legs and walk into the Hudson River. But of course, the banks of the Hudson were so brimming with garbage and raw sewage that the putrid stench would drive back even the most desperate suicide seeker. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Dial in toll free to take control of the airwaves at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Drop by freetalklive.com. Of course, lots to talk about. You may bring up anything you'd like with you in the studio tonight. You've got Ian. Derek J. And Mark. And we've been all over the place talking about uh, a Catholic town, Ave Maria. Or is it a Catholic town? The local newspaper says that uh, things aren't as they've been made out to be by the mainstream media, that non-Catholics are welcome uh, in Ave Maria, Florida. But the fact remains, it is a town that was designed by the founder of Domino's Pizza, who apparently is a very devout Catholic. It is centered, the town's design is centered around the what they call the oratory. This is some sort of a Catholic church kind of thing. It's basically at the center of the town. There's also a Catholic university, Ave Maria University, that exists in the town. And so there's a real heavy 
tinge, I guess you could say, to uh, the lifestyle there. Uh, it would, but the probably, news has been inaccurate in some ways. Yeah. That said, while the news has been inaccurate, that said, it would probably be pretty uncomfortable to be the town's lone uh, atheist or something like that in a, in a place like that. 27,000 people, um, they mentioned that uh, people are free to not believe what they want. There's there's atheists in that town. Yeah, there likely are. I imagine some of them work at the university. There was actually a story uh, over at Wired.com that is gives a little bit more information about this, and I don't have it pulled up at the moment. I, I did have it a, a little bit ago, but it was pretty interesting because it showed several pictures uh, a photographer, I guess from the Naples area in Florida, went out to this place. This town's 40-something uh, minutes away from Naples. It's literally out, you know, in the woods, in the sticks. I mean, this is this this is built in real Florida, east of the interstate, where, you know, it's in the swamp, uh, essentially. And so you'd really, 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 really want to have to live out in this place. It's, is- it's described as isolated. Uh, for some reason, you would have to want to live in this place, and... That reason would likely be that you're a Catholic. Um, so it would be interesting to see the, a breakdown, some sort of a survey of the community in Ave Maria as far as you know what percentage of them consider themselves Catholics versus other types of Christianity, Muslim, etc. I think that would be pretty interesting. Yeah, I'd like to see in what ways they stand out. Like, do their virtues speak for themselves? Like, do they have you know the most what intact the families? The yeah, exactly. <laughs> do they have what, what sort of things uh, can we demonstrate? when people of like mind come together in that way. Yeah, yeah. and that's something that uh, you know, Christianity as a whole should f- focus on uh, purporting. Is, is like, What are we doing that, what are we producing that's so much better? Are we happier? Are we, you know, whatever. Are, it's, are we wealthier? Whatever it is, do, you know, what, what are the benefits of being what we are? Well, you can measure certain things like charity or how many intact families there are. Or, well, or you the can span chari- of a marriage. You can measure charity, but I don't always think that uh, it's an unfair measure. So if, for instance, you're giving money to your church and they're building a new fellowship hall, that's not charity to my mind. Oh, good. Congratulations. You've built another building for you guys to do things on during in, during the week and on the weekends. Congratulations. Not charity. That is, uh, you know, to me, charity, you've got to be helping somebody who has less than you. Now, there's an article in the Daily Mail that claims the, and this was written in 2013, that claims that Ave Maria only had about 500 homes at the time of this writing, which there's no way that could be. It's explosive growth. 27,000 people. Now, look, I don't know how it's many. really homes, packed in there. I don't know how many homes they have now, and I don't know how many people are going to this college campus, but I, I don't know. If there's only 500 homes back in 2013, it seems unbelievable that there would be 7,000 homes there now, and that's the claim uh, based on a Google search saying there's 7,200-something homes. Uh, there's a lot of growth in, in a year, if that's if that's really true, because the other news about Ave Maria is that it had a kind of a tough time considering that it, it started, the genesis of the idea literally started right before the economic downturn. Yes. So in 2005 is when the idea came out, they came out with, it, but it was 07 when they first sort of opened the doors, yeah. which was right at the beginning of, <laughs> uh, you know, the economic downturn. It's hard so, to sell houses in 2007. Yeah, most of the most of the people who live there are either retirees or they work for the college, or if they don't work for the college, they work likely in Naples, which is, again, a 40-something minute drive away from this town. So why on earth would you want to locate yourself in this town? Because it's not convenient to anything except for the university there. So uh, there's a little bit more here from Wired.com. Now, this story came out earlier this year, and it's just a series of photographs from Ave Maria sort of giving it a, a desolate feel uh, to it. and Like these Chinese towns that they've built that, that no one's living in. Oh, not quite that bad. Not quite that bad. This one definitely shows some people, uh, but those are, those are really creepy what you're talking about, Mark. Yeah. You're not just talking about towns. You, you mean cities. There are yes. like, There's like a Chinese city or two or three. I don't know how many there are. Giant but, Chinese cities yeah. that... Uh, the government funded. That yeah, no that one been, lives there. No one lives there. It's crazy stuff. Ryan Steele's photographs of the planned Catholic community of Ave Maria will, for many people, reinforce the idea that Florida is a strange place that creates crazy headlines. That's not his intention, <laughs> nor is he ridiculing re- religion. As a Florida native, I I just <laughs> thanks all of you. People in Florida, whatever the hell you're doing in order to make me look that much weirder. Rather, Steele's series, which is entitled Ave Maria, One Man's Vision, is a long look at the long development of an idiosyncratic place. Ave Maria was conceived of and largely funded by Tom Monahan, the devout founder of Domino's Pizza. 
Ave Maria, the southern end of the state, and a place of geographic and spiritual is a place of geographic and spiritual isolation. Although drawn by the unique religious personality of the unincorporated town, Steele soon realized it was not so easily compartmentalized. The resulting work explores universal themes of opportunity, identity, and money. He says it was bizarre and funny to me that people of similar faith would decide to move to this isolated place to live their lives. And that doesn't seem very bizarre to me, but that's because I moved to New Hampshire to be around people that are more free and to live a more free lifestyle. So I can totally understand why people who have a particular religious belief would do something similar. But it's strange to him. He goes on to say the religious angle's there, but so too is the economic downturn, the utopian vision, and the creation and feel of what defines a modern community. Ave Maria is so new that the story hasn't been written yet. Although founded in 2005, Ave Maria has come together slowly. The recession devastated Florida, and the planned community almost certainly would have failed without private support. Since beginning his project in 2011, Steele, the photographer who grew up in Florida, has seen the gas station open and the shopping mall remain closed. He's seen teens filming homemade horror flicks in the vacant lots and worshippers pour out of Sunday Mass by the thousands. He shoots in the early morning and the late afternoon because it affords the best light, but even then, he rarely encounters people. He says isolation is obviously a significant part of the project. Often, I can photograph in the middle of the street. Steele describes himself as not a believer and says the number of times he's attended Mass in Ave Maria exceeds the cumulative number of times he's been to church before starting the project. When All Saints Day provided a scene brimming with people, it filled him with awe, but it put him at artistic loss. He says, I couldn't believe there were so many people. They just kept coming. There was no photograph I could have made to depict that experience. For everything photography can do so well, it couldn't deal with this. That photo would have taken away from the isolation theme in the work, but it was such an important moment for me. Now, I don't know what else. Is All Saints Day like a major holiday for uh, Catholic folks? As that I've sound. never heard of what that is. Uh, it may, it, uh, it'd be easy to look at his work and think he's belittling, belittling faith or the people of Ave Maria. Not so. He has a higher aim, says Wired. Quote, I would hate for the photographs to read like I was making fun of people's Catholicism. That reading is shallow, he says. I've started to identify with the people living there and why they might want to live in a place where they know their neighbor, can leave their bike in the front yard overnight, and probably the door's unlocked. Yeah. Most of the people Who in, wouldn't want that? Most of the people in Ave Maria are retired. They work at the university or commute to Naples just 45 minutes away. The community is surrounded with small towns with starkly contrasting demographics. Its nearest neighbor is Immokalee, a, a, poor, Mokali, yeah. a poor community of about 20,000 people, most of them Hispanic. It stands in—have you ever been there, Mark? I, I'm familiar with it. It stands in stark contrast to Ave Maria, yet underscores how faith and religion are a thread that unites people of divergent backgrounds. Monahan was raised in a Catholic orphanage, making him a classic rags-to-riches story. He use, he's using his vast fortune to realize Ave Maria. The ornate oratory around which the town revolves rises incongruously from the flat landscape. It leaves Steele wondering whether the place should have been built. It's a strange thing to do, thing to do, reflects the photographer. We could spend days talking about his ego, but if we're going to do that, we should also consider that he built the community for the greater good. Don't get me wrong, I don't want to live there, but I understand. Well, another man's perspective on what it was like to take pictures around this uh, unusual place. You're welcome to share your thoughts on it. 855 450 free. Coming up, Uber is in hot water again. People are upset, some people, over the prices they were charging people to get away from a hostage situation today. Free Talk Live. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Hi, everyone. I'm Chuck Woolery. After putting a few thousand couples together on Love Connection, you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath. Smart Mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn, and you get clean breath for about 12 hours. Other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour. Gum and mints, well, they just cover it up. Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, 
Look for the green box at your favorite store. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. 2237. Free Talk Live. I think you guys should be encouraging people to drop the drugs, drop the alcohol, and live a straight life. Why? And that's freedom. Well, that wait. is freedom. How, how can you say? <laughs> I mean, maybe it's freedom for you, but what if I enjoy altering my consciousness? Well, I think it's sad. Why? Um, it's a sad existence. Um, when people have to be addicted to drugs and alcohol. Oh, oh I'm not you're, addicted. Now, now you're assuming addiction. Alcohol, we're talking about marijuana, we're talking about drug use in general. What about caffeine? Sad Are we talking about caffeine? I'm talking about something that, what you just said, is mind-altering. So oh, caffeine certainly is. You need a mind chocolate altering. candy bar. If you have a chocolate candy bar and there's caffeine in it, it doesn't get you high. Oh, you know what the well, wait is. a minute. Christy, I have a, I'm sensitive to, to caffeine, and I can tell you, two Diet Cokes will make me a very angry, angry man. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you'd like right here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. We've been following the difficulties of uh, some of these ride-sharing companies that have uh, become very, very popular around the world, Uber and Lyft, and governments, many of them not too friendly towards these companies because they're protecting their buddies in the taxi cab industry who have been paying government fees and bribes for a long time, and they're very upset about these uh, upstarts and these innovators. Uber and Lyft will uh, give you the latest on what's happening. People are upset. Some people are upset about what Uber did uh, with uh, giving people rides out of a hostage situation or out of the area of a hostage situation. Derek J has that story, and we'll hit that up. Also, we'll uh, talk to you about whatever's on your mind. Toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. People are always asking us on Free Talk Live how they can best spread the ideas of liberty to their family and friends, and my answer has really often been, um, almost always been, f- fiction. I think that, uh, you know, sto- good, good storytelling is uh, the best way to do that. Well, I'm going to amend that now because In Freedom's Cause isn't entirely fiction. It's the historical story of William Wallace um, and his and the, the you know one of the greatest struggles for freedom in human history. Now it is sort of fictional in that there's a couple of characters that uh, the story is told through, but it's a largely historical story, and it is a 
it's not a movie, but it's like a movie because it has its own score. It has big name Hollywood actors, but there's no video to it. It's all audio. It's audio theater. Some of those actors are James Cosmo from Braveheart, Billy Boyd from Lord of the Rings, uh, Skandar Keys from Chronicle of Narnia, uh, Joanne Froggett from Downton Abbey. It's an empowering story of uh, young women and young men. So th this is this should be given to people young and old uh, on your Christmas list. I think it's a great choice. Check out infreedomscause.com. Go there. Enjoy the audio that's available to you for free just to give, so, give you sort of a feel for it. And get the family four-pack because we've got a special offer for Free Talk Live listeners. You just go there. Use coupon code FTL. Get the family four-pack at half price. That's four gifts. It brings it down to the, the cost of 50 bucks. That's $12.50 per gift. That's a great little uh, stocking stuffer sort of st sort of gift. And uh, the kids in your life will love it. Um, infreedomscause.com, coupon code FTL. It's the liberty gift of the season. Infreedomscause.com, coupon code FTL. So Uber is once again in the news, and it's not for what they're usually in the news for. And usually the Uber's making headlines because governments all around the, uh, the United States are trying to stop Uber and Lyft from doing business uh, in their political designations. In fact, I heard uh, something about, uh, let's see, uh, Manchester, I guess, there's going to be some sort of hearing now in uh, in New Hampshire about Uber operating there. Now, I don't think the proposal's been made to prohibit it in Manchester. I think they're talking about creating some sort of regulations just for Uber. Not that that's a good thing necessarily, but I, I haven't heard they're talking about a total prohibition. So we'll let you know more as we hear about that. But uh, all the way over in Sydney, Australia, Derek J., you've got a story. Yeah, this story comes from the WashingtonPost.com where Gail Sullivan writes that after an armed gunman took patrons of a Sydney chocolate shop hostage during rush hour this morning, mm. the transportation company Uber quadrupled its fares for panic-stricken customers fleeing the central business district. It charged a minimum of $100. That's Australian dollars, so that's about 82 bucks U.S. Wow. So, yeah, just to es escape the business district. That's not leaving the city. That's yeah. just leaving one part of the city for another. So within an hour, Uber backtracked after the media publicized customer complaints of price gouging. Quote, We're all concerned about the events happening in Sydney today, Katie Coran, an Uber spokesperson, told the Washington Post in a statement. Uber Sydney will be providing free rides out of the central business district to help Sydney ciders get home safely. Well, that's a huge turnaround. That is I'd a big say turnaround. I'd say it's a market response. So there's a few things that are happening in this story. That first there's a hostage situation which is a tragedy can't be avoided just random violent acts sometimes happen in the world. But then well, um let's not forget that uh, no one was uh, concealed carrying there because basically handguns are illegal in Australia, mm -hmm. but somehow this gunman managed to have them. So mm -hmm. the all the, only the outlaw had a gun in this circumstance right. because they had outlawed guns. So first off, hmm, interesting, the Sydney is getting, you know, the the, the Australian government's getting no uh, not getting lambasted by anybody for disarming its people and leaving them helpless in the face of terrorists. Yeah, and that's a good point cuz three people did die, uh two that were victims and one the gunman himself. Oof. Now what I see with this is a bunch of people. So I went to their their Twitter feed to go check Uber? this out. Yeah, I went to Uber's Uber Sydney specifically to read the tweets. And they say we are all concerned with the events. Fares have increased. Now this is what the article leaves out. It says fares have increased to encourage more drivers to come online and pick up passengers in mm, the area. Yes. Now that was the point that I was going to make. Is is really you're asking me to drive towards a man with a gun who's killing people, and yeah. I should give you a discounted rate? What the hell is wrong with you, you socialist crazy person? Yeah, these customers are really asking for a lot. Uh, if they're demanding that Uber give them, first of all, free rides, like literally, they're demanding free rides out of there from from who? Like from from these random people who have cars? Why not get the government? How come the school bus drivers didn't rush in and get these people? Why are they holding a private company responsible? I don't know, but it's really weird to see some of these people's tweets. I guess because they're more responsive than the government, Mark. <laughs> Maybe it's because they can tweet at them and get a response. Well, this is the problem with democracy is every moron gets an opinion. Yep, yeah, but this is the market at work because Uber did turn around and say, okay, we'll give you free rides. 
Which means Uber is then paying the drivers, right? Yeah, but presumably. I, I don't know whether I support what Uber did in that circumstance because what they uh, have done is, in, in buckling to the uh, the public opinion here, what they've done is, is sort of you know uh, bolstered these people's opinion that they deserved a free ride from uh, from a, from the average individual who decided to be a ri- uh, driver for Uber. Um, uh, they deserve- Just because someone was being held hostage somewhere. I wonder, like, what's the radius in which you could get picked up for the free ride? If I was down the street, uh, you know, at, eating at a restaurant and I heard the news, oh, hey, I can get a free ride from Uber. I'm scared, you know, then, you know, come pick me up. I'm two blocks away. How, how close to the actual incident were those free rides available? Did you have to get picked up, you know, in the parking lot of the coffee shop? Or, you know, if you were a, a, a block away at a business office, would you be able to get a free ride? It's unclear, but the Uber Sydney says that they will refund any customer who paid the exorbitant fare mm. rate when they were leaving the coffee shop. So I think it's an act of goodwill. What I like to see is that a company in its first tweet addressing the situation addresses supply and demand. Fares have increased to encourage more drivers. So that's, that's, yes. that's they're talking about their supply. They can't just force their drivers out onto the streets they need to entice them somehow and uh right, they're independent contractors right, the, and, uber, the people working for uber and lyft they're not employees so there's they're not a specific schedule the boss can't call them up and say hey we need you on the streets uh like you said they've got to make it worth their while so apparently uber has uh, changed their mind and has decided to probably pay the drivers a little bit more in order to have whatever public uh, pr fix that might entail And you think it was a good move to offer the free rides? Well, I think it's good to respond to the market. There's going to be other people who enter the market, and Uber was just first. We'll see Mm -hmm. how other competition would handle the same situation. Sure. uh, Share share your thoughts here with us, if you'd like. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Should Uber have backed down uh, due to some people being upset? It's Free Talk Live. Hi, I'm John Rainey, Chief Financial Officer of United Airlines, and I'm honored to be the National Chair for the 2015 March for Babies campaign for the March of Dimes. United is a proud supporter of the March of Dimes mission to improve the health of babies and fight premature birth. We're helping the March of Dimes fund breakthroughs in research and community programs that help more mothers have full-term pregnancies and healthy babies. Please join us in working together for stronger, healthier babies. Visit marchofdimes.org. This holiday season, give the gift that keeps on giving, an in-home freeze dryer from Harvest Right. With your very own freeze dryer, you'll be able to freeze dry the food your family loves. Because we live in uncertain, difficult times, what better way to show your love for your family than to buy them a gift that helps them preserve food they can use now or in 25 years. Go to HarvestRight.com and find out how you can get your in-home freeze dryer. Layaway is available. That's HarvestRight.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin? Any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers, too. Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com 
DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. If you are successful at what you do, whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, a business owner, or you have a great career, you understand the concept of protecting yourself. Well, are you protecting yourself, your family, and your assets with quality term life insurance? Consider these possible rates. A man age 45 non-tobacco user could obtain $1 million of coverage for as little as $75 a month, and this rate is fixed for the next 10 years. We specialize in policies of five. $500,000 and above. A man age 50, non-tobacco user, may be able to obtain $500,000 of coverage for as little as $115 a month. And this rate is fixed for the next 20 years. We have great rates for smokers too. Call the Term Lifeline now. 800-872-0403. 800-872-0403. 800-872-0403. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free to bring up anything you'd like. 855-450-FREE. That is the toll-free number. 855-450-3733. Join us online as well at freetalklive.com. The feature's there. Totally free. You can get a free pound of coffee by going to coffee.freetalklive.com. It's delicious coffee, coffee amongst the best you've ever tasted in your life, I would wager. It is shade-grown, 100% organic, top 1% grade Arabica beans. It's produced by a company called BuzzBox, It's uh, and I drink it every day. I think you'll love it. You can upgrade your coffee experience by continuing to get your coffee through the subscription program there. You can cancel at any time. You can get your free pound and go. We know you want to try it uh, before you buy, and that's fine. But I think what uh, is really special about BuzzBox is, is that they give us back a little bit of the profits that we can then give out as microloans through Kiva.org. With those microloans, we're able to help people around the world, and I'm, I'm delighted that we've helped so many, and when they get paid back, we can help more. So it's coffee.freetalklive.com for your free pound. All right, let's continue here with your calls and thoughts. We're going to Skype where Tommy is on the line in Glasgow. Tommy, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Derek, and Mark. Hey, they can take our lives, but they can never take our Free Talk Live. Hey, Tommy. <laughs> good evening, sir. How Go ahead. Doing? Or good, uh, I guess good morning where you are. It's uh, it's past midnight there. Go ahead with your thoughts. Yeah, well, back doing taxiing after having a little extended vacation. But, uh, you know, it's a... Well, when you're on the streets of Glasgow, like for instance, tonight, it's the and at the weekend there it was really busy. It's the the laws of supply and demand. I mean, the sad capitalist fact is, if there's a less of a of a a, a resource, then it rockets in price. So, you know, at night time of the weekend there, people were saying, driver, take fifty pound to do a maybe a three or four mile fare. I mean, I didn't even have to say anything, but that's what people were offering. When normally that three four pound fare would work, a uh, three four mile fare would normally be four five pound. So people are paying up to you know as much as that from five pound to fifty pound a difference, uh, just because well they know they'll get them up the road quicker. And you can't really blame a taxi driver uh, if if whatever the going rate is happens to increase just for a, a few short hours. Especially you know, if so he has to drive into a, a war zone to get you. Now, yeah, now yeah, in the case of Uber, are you driving for Uber there in uh, in Glasgow? No, I'm, I'm not with them as yet. Uh, but I was thinking of of going for them, but uh, I've not really looked into how it goes because I had a wee extended break. Then I've just get back into doing it. So, so you're I'll back driving for a, a cab company. You're you're driving for a regular cab company. A company, and then what they call a wee bit of pirate, and on the side a wee bit of uh, sitting there and just saying. Uh, well, let's haggle. You know, if somebody wants to put a price on going up the road instead of paying the, the, the £5 or £10 fare, if someone wants to say, driver, here's £30, 
who am I to turn that down? You know, I, I, I might come from, I might have come from an Islamic faith now, but I've got Christian children who, in less than nine shoplifting days, as they say in Scotland or Glasgow, uh, left to go. You know, I have to feed my children. So yeah, if somebody wants to pay over the odds. But listen, I better go, lads, because somebody I need to go and pick up here is, okay. is wanting to pay over the odds, hopefully very soon. But I'll get in touch with you soon. All right, man. Scotland well, thanks for the uh, the call, Tommy. Appreciate it. Uh, so there you go. So apparently he works for a cab company that uh, he can accept more money for uh, for a fare from somebody. Yeah, right. and it's because, as he pointed out, the demand. It's The demand is so high. He's going to be there out, out there picking up rides all night. The, the supply stays the same, so why get angry at the supply? Why not get angry at the people at the, the shop for demanding taxi cabs so much? I um I, yeah I think that's absolutely ridiculous. It's like a bunch of people who just simply don't ex, uh don't understand economics complaining. A bunch of babies going wah. Well, they've I'm, probably been told they have a right to transportation or something well, like I, that. I'm sure they've you been have told a right they, to low prices. You you have a right to force me to drive into a war zone and put my life on the line to give you a free cab ride because you're insane. But um as far as taxi cabs taking more and less money, I I drove a cab for uh for some time and I, I've got to say that it. I, I was never I was never given uh, a handbook on how to handle this, but if two mm-hmm. people were, uh, say, bidding on the service of me taking them on a ride, I wouldn't have a problem with choosing the highest bidder sure. um, in that given circumstance. Um, now, I'm sure that the, the person who lost the bidding war in that could say that I didn't give them a ride for whatever reason they decided that I didn't give them a ride, but the reason would be because the other person offered me more money. And that would be what was, or uh, sometimes I felt like I was in danger in when I was driving. I just didn't like the circumstances that uh, that I was in. Mm-hmm. So at some point, the taxi cab company realized the best place for me was to take the little old ladies for, uh, to the airport. But would you take less money to go to a better neighborhood? Absolutely. Uh huh. Let's talk to Dan in Illinois. Dan, you're on Free Talk Live. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? Dan, go ahead, sir. Okay. Uh-huh. So first of all, I, I do um, uh, sympathize with the uh, cab drivers in the city in the uh, which McCall is um, Sydney. <clears throat> their uh, concerns with the the uh, competition between the like car, uh, Lyft, and Uber. The competition is also between sidecar and Uber. Very different. I don't know about Sydney, Australia, but in the states, uh, I was considering joining. Yeah, I was set. I can't quite make out what you're saying there. I think you may have a bad uh, connection, Dan. We're going to put you on hold and try to bring you back here in a moment. Maybe you'll get in a clearer cell. It was just dropping out too much, making it too difficult to really uh, capture what uh, the essence of his point was. Our toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. Now, it's interesting, though, that Uber is still... Even though it's more decentralized than your average cab company in that Uber doesn't own the the cars, Uber doesn't own the drivers, the Uber is just contracting with people. They have set a, a set of standards that the cars have to meet, from what I understand. You know, they've got to be in operable condition and, you know, not sure. dangerous, etc. Uh, but there's still some centralization going on there with Uber in that it's Uber that decided to raise the rates, not the mm-hmm. individual drivers who were deciding to raise the rates and or lower the rates. Sure, but that's helpful. I mean, coming up with prices for things is hard. I, I work in a business where we resell things and coming up with how do you price things What correctly? do you want to price this, uh, this, this old... This, this widget. Yeah. You know, what's the value of this widget to somebody? Who knows? Who knows? And Uber has a calculation for that. They've got an algorithm that they plugged in. That was their excuse, at least. They said, hey, you know, we just plug in a formula. And if, if demand is this high, then we increase the price to well, fill supply. Wouldn't it be nice, though? I think it would be nice if uh, the drivers could have some sort of cho- choice as far as what the price is. So maybe Uber could say, all right, well, we're willing to increase the price. It's Uber. It's surge time. People are demanding that we see there's a high demand on our services. So we're going to increase the maximum cost to a ride to, you know, Thirty dollars a mile, or something crazy, whatever it might be, and then have the driver be willing to say, "Okay, well, I'm willing to work for twenty or you know twenty five And that way, the drivers would compete on rate as well. And so, if one Uber driver wanted to guarantee he just had fare after fare after fare, he could set his rate slightly lower than the rest of the Uber drivers who are out on the road at the moment, and then he would have no shortage whatsoever of people. I don't know, man. It just seems like it seems like. It would have been interesting to see where the prices of the Uber drivers would be if the drivers themselves could set the rate. 
Yeah, but while you're focusing on driving a car and getting someone safely from point A to point B, do you really want to be um, acting like a stock trader in the, the hole? I mean, you you mm. want to be focused on the road, not on yeah, what, but be how, how much setting, money can I get for this But this is how ride. a business, uh, this is how Uber's decided to run, and the drivers take what they, you know, take take what the offer is. And, and so, yeah, I mean, you might be able to open yourself a competing cab company, Ian, but yeah, we'll see whether we see how you do against Uber. No, I'm not proposing that I would want to compete with them. I was just saying it would be interesting to see where, if the Uber drivers could si- submit their own prices, uh, what well, sort of market that resulted in. I bet they probably are, are hesitant to implement that sort of policy because Uber, as I understand it, takes a cut from each ride. And if ah, they were to be taking a cut right. from each ride, they, they want a certain amount per ride. Or if you were able to negotiate your own price, you might just say, oh, Oh, this ride only cost nine dollars when really it cost about ninety, and then Uber doesn't get any of that cut. Well, they would get less. Well, I mean, they yeah, they, they would get less of it, right? Okay, that's a good point. The toll free number here eight fifty five four fifty three. Moments remain, but maybe enough time for your call and thoughts. If you get on the lines right now, toll free eight fifty five four fifty three, or you can Skype into the show at Skype username lrn.fm. There's more coming up here. Whether you want to talk about Uber or the Catholic town in Florida or the face sitting protests, which we never got back to, it's Free Talk Live. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. For all of you who are inspired to create your own unique holiday cards and gifts. For all of you, there's Vistaprint.com. At Vistaprint.com, creating personalized holiday cards is simple. Choose from hundreds of designs and add your own photos and special messages. And there's 60% off. Plus, personalized one-of-a-kind gifts are also to 60% off. It's our best deal of the season. But hurry, offer ends December 7th. The only way to get this incredible deal is to go to Vistaprint.com, click the microphone in the upper right corner, and enter code RADIO60. Vistaprint.com, code RADIO, the word 60. The non- Knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. 
Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Maybe we've got enough time for you if you dial now at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. But as happens to be the case in a lot of episodes of Free Talk Live, we have more calls on hold in the final segment than always throughout the entire show. So if you don't get in tonight, mark your calendar for tomorrow at 7 o'clock at night Eastern Time, and you can call in right then. We'll pick up the conversation uh, where we left off. With you tonight in studio, it's Ian. Derek J. And Mark. Let's go right back into your calls and... And thoughts. Ladies first, Michelle Seven on the line calling from who knows where. You're on Free Talk Live. Hi, Ian. Hey, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Mark and Derek, how are you? Good. What's on your Good. mind tonight? Well, I wanted to thank you guys um, because because of your fine example um, to me with filming police and everything, I just was saved three tickets as well as going to jail. Woohoo! So, really? Thank you. <laughs> yes. You believe this was and because I, I you were w- recording them? Well, funny enough, you know, I'm not real good with cameras and everything, and I actually hadn't pressed the right button, but they thought I was recording them. <laughs> what had happened was, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm so silly. I was um, I was driving down the road. No one was around in, um, in New Jersey, and, um, and this police officer, who I did not know was a police officer, was on my tail. It was just this car, random. And there was plenty of room on, this, on the road. It was, there were two lanes. There was no reason for them to be so so close to me that I couldn't even see the, the front of their vehicle. And, you know, I'm in the big truck and everything. So, mm. it's, you know, slowing down and stopping my car is a big deal. And for them, you know, it's just dangerous to drive that close to people. You're so all that tailgating case. and horn honking, th- that's terrible. And yeah. those d- lights on the top of your car look ridiculous. So, is that as, um, the car- yeah, that was my best. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> The car pulled up next to me, and um, I saw that it was a, a cop and, and a woman, and um, I just thought, oh, whatever. And <laughs> she takes off at the light, yeah, <laughs> takes off speeding at the light, and with no lights on, no emergency to go to or whatever. And so I, you know, drove up right next to her, and I am keeping even pace with her, and she's 35, and she's going 42, and I am too. And mm-hmm. so we go to the next light, and I give a honk, and I roll down my window, and I say, hey. You were just speeding, and she said, "Yeah, what are you gonna do about it? Give me a ticket." Ooh, and wow! You know me, I'm so sassy. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah, actually, I think I might do that." She goes, "Great, go ahead and pull over. I'll give you one too." <gasps> and I said, "Well, you know, I can give you a ticket." And she said, "Yeah, pull over. I want to see your license, registration, and your insurance." Wow! And I thought she was just being, you know. Biachi. And so um, I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. And I start going, and she pulls up behind me with her lights going. And so I go, I continue going until I am at the worst possible place to pull over. Like, I'm practically <laughs> on the train track. And, um, and, and I call the police. Now, that is something that I have now done three times, and every time I've gotten out of all my tickets, I call 911 and say I'm in fear for my life, that there is someone that is trying to um, get into my vehicle, and they're like, what, what, what? And, uh, and this time they said, but you're, you mean a police officer? And they told me, they said, this is not a 911 call. And, um, so, but in any case, so if they did send another cop to the scene. So now there are three cars and the woman comes up and I have my camera there. I'm like, hold on, hold on. I've got to film this. And, and, um, I explained to the other officer what had happened. And this woman was just so aggressive. And I said, you know, do you want to talk about this? Because all I said (laughs) to you was you were speeding. Like, you know, badges don't grant extra rights. And you, what are you doing? You weren't going to an emergency. And why would you do that? 
And um, and so I didn't have registration or insurance. <laughs> so um, I didn't have that to give. But um, in any case, so I'm there filming, and I just repeated back to her. I said, here, I'd like you to repeat into the camera what you said to me when I said, you're speeding. And I was not apologetic. I was not shy. I was very aggressive and assertive. And um, and they took my license and came back and said, insurance or registration? I said, yeah, I don't, I don't really have any of that. And... Um, and they said, okay, well, do you know you're required to have that? I'm like, well, yeah. And the, uh, uh, the female cop said, I'm not going to write you a ticket for the registration or the insurance or the speeding. I'm going to let you go. And I said, okay, I'll turn this camera off. And there was another officer there. And I said, but I'd like to know, why were you so rude to me? All I said to you was, you're speeding. And she said, I'm going to let you go. So <laughs> run along. Have a good evening. And she just continued to be rude. But I think that she got the smackdown from the other officers there who were plainly, you know, I, they thought I'd recorded her, you know, recorded saying wow. that uh, that's an know, amazing story well. michelle that that uh you know you are still driving with no registration and they just let you drive away from that <laughs> uh, do you mind telling us which state that was which cops new or, jersey new jersey wow. state, are they new state jersey. police state police or local cops uh, this not the state police no this was the, a local town police but this is the same town where um, my son, who he's actually got tickets in the last several months in three different towns here, all for victimless crimes such as skateboarding, filming cops, having uh, paraphernalia but no weed, two thousand dollars in fines he has racked up. What and, happens in New um, Jersey all, if you don't pay a fine? You go to jail. He spent three days in jail so far. Wow. Now is this uh and they your youngest county for that. Is this your youngest son who is is he now eighteen over eighteen? He's now, yes. He's okay. nineteen now. Gotcha. And um so so it is just you know, it's a it's a revenue generator for the state and you know, as it is in all states and everything. But I just want to encourage people to film the police and be assertive and remember that you own yourself and that they're just they're just people and they're mm -hmm. wearing costumes and they're really they have this Illusion that they are much more important than they are. It's all so. very important to remember. And Michelle, I have to say, I miss you. Wish you were uh, back I here in New you Hampshire. Too. And uh, hope you're having fun down there. And thanks, uh, thanks for the call tonight. Great story. It. Yeah, always a great story. I mean, she's so ballsy. I mean, just driving around with no registration and not living in New Hampshire, not having the activist right. community. She does it for a support her. A principled reason. It's not that she can't afford necessarily um, insurance. Yeah. She so does freedom it to travel. Yeah, kind of yeah, thing. and makes it a conversation starter everywhere she goes because sure. most people would never pay registration if they weren't forced to. Let's talk to Jeremy. He's in Albany. Jeremy, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, you're on the uh, air. Uh, it's kind of hard to uh, uh, respond after such a compelling story. Uh, but uh, I, I basically I just wanted to comment uh, about uh, you know Uber's response to the price gouging. Um, you know, it, some see it you know as uh, you know as a, a negative, but I you know it seems they respond to you know, responded pretty quickly to you know the market you know themselves you know the people you know using technology you know it, it, their reaction was you know quite. You know, altruistic and optimistic. You know, it's you know, capitalism isn't this uh, you know cold science that is you know this this left wing notion that it's you know harsh and you know it, and disempowering. You know, they, they're when when the force of government isn't involved, you know, great things happen. And and you know, I think that was a, a great display of that. Right. Well, what happened was is that that um, what people recognized here was that Uber had the best system for deploying. Uh, cars, uh, escape uh, escape vehicles for this area, but what <laughs> what they didn't understand is that, that somehow they, they felt like they had a right to this because, uh, you know, the government, who was too incompetent to deploy vehicles there to get these people to escape, this is the organization that you think that you have, uh, you know, the, the rights that should, should come from, you know, they, they couldn't do anything. And so it's it's really just sort of this mixed up, messed up folk uh, thing where people recognize that Uber does the the best job for deploying escape vehicles, but they believe that they should get it for free. If you everything you want in life is free, then nobody makes any money, and you never get the things you want. Well, well, I, yeah, I, I certainly agree. But I, you know, like the, the it wasn't uh, that 
that, that people were, you know, asking or forcing them, hey, you, you need to give us this for free. You know, they were, you know, kind of responding to people saying, you know, hey, this is a, a tense situation. Yeah, that's and, a good know, point. Humanity, yeah, you know, that's, that's a good point. Uber didn't make the rides free because people were demanding that. People were only right. objecting to the increase in the, the drastic increase in prices. And in order to make good, they on their own volition decided to make the rides free. That's a good, it's an important uh, distinction to make there, Jeremy. And uh, I want to thank Absolutely. you for the, the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. So uh, don't forget to, jo uh, to join Derek J on his website, derekj.me. And uh, want to share with you just a little bit more here from the face sitting protest. Uh, apparently, you could also sit on Santa Claus's face at the face sitting protest. Oh, uh, there was actually a man dressed as Santa Claus holding a sign with, a le with an elf. Uh, saying, sit on Santa's face. And apparently he found uh, at least one person to take him up on the offer. And finally, they did actually set a record at this particular event for the most people, most couples who were uh, sitting on one another's face. It was 21 couples. There were actually people who were laying down begging for folks to come and sit on their face. <laughs> Apparently there, there were more people willing to have their faces sat upon than to do the sitting. Somehow that does not surprise me. See you tomorrow night online. In the meantime, freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, December 12th, 2014. Silver is trading at $17.07 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,224 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $352. Antiwar.com reports the Syrian civil war has gotten so convoluted and created so many rival factions that sometimes it's hard to know who is fighting against whom at any given time. It also gives rise to conspiracy theories. One of those theories is that the Islamic State and the Assad government are secretly in league since the two largest factions in Syria rarely clash directly and rather focus on the smaller players. It's not as though they never fight, of course. Syria launched high-profile attacks on the Islamic State's capital of Raqqa earlier this month, and the Islamic State is still bragging about the recent capture of a Syrian airbase in the Raqqa province. And while